DJ KJ. If this doesn't get you hyped for the final round, I don't know what will. Welcome back to beautiful Portland, Oregon, and Glendevere for the final round of the Portland Open, presented by Dynamic Discs. Sitting on a two-stroke lead is Simon Lanzat. With Eagle on the IR, it's up to Simon to make it a Crush Boys repeat in Portland. Can he pull it off? He'll find out live on the Disc Golf Network. There is the man of the hour. Two-stroke lead going into this final round. Welcome to the booth in Milwaukee. I'm Ian Anderson, sitting next to Philo Brathwaite. Philo, who you got your money on? Well, man, my money don't jiggle jiggle. It folds. <laughs> I'm going to put it on Simon today. The man is pretty awesome. When he's in a position like this, we've seen it last week. Pretty, you know, he fought everybody off. He did what he had to do, took it down. You know, he's in the same spot again. He's got the biggest shark of them all, really, and Paul McBeth hot on his heels. Kind of hot. Five strokes is a bit of a cushion, but, you know, conditions, a little wet outside. Just never know. When Paul. you start to pick. Paul's done it before. He's done it many times before, so. Let's check out how Simon has earned his way here. It's been great shots. Accurate throwing and incredible putting. And a little bit of luck. Yeah. A lot of luck there. <laughs> <laughs> that was way gone and somehow hits the B button. Over on 18, this tee shot is just unbelievably huge trivializing the rest he seems to find the spots where you would love to drop a disc and play your second shot from yeah you know, it's just like perfect landing zones over and over displaying extreme touch here on this super tricky part three slow turning to the right steep cliff just steps behind the basket it seems like he's picking the perfect time to bust out Simon Power and Simon Lyons. He is. He's not doing it every single shot. He's definitely picking his moments where he's like, oh, this is a good shot here, something I can really get mm -hmm. aggressive on, and then he makes it happen more times than not. Yeah, Simon Lyons used to cost him tournaments. Now they get him wins. Well, he's only done it very select times, right, like right. you said, man. It's not like he's just trying to be a hero every shot, but you know, when the course opens a gap for him like that one, he's going to take it. I didn't. Still over 90% C1X, I believe. Yeah. Simon yeah. on the putting green this week. Really, really good. Utilizing the roller even out here on this long, wide open track. There are some wooded areas, but there's still a lot of space to get the disc on the ground and roll. Simon, one of the best in the world at doing that as well. And Simon is back. 6-2, and you can't see him finishing worse than third, third today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Plus, if something catastrophic happens to him, like injures himself or, you know, strains the elbow or something weird like that, slip on a tee pad type of thing, I don't really see it, it happening. No. I love the, the talk we got from Simon in these last two interviews. A Very little confident. more confidence than we've ever, I've ever heard from Simon throw out there to the world. Correct. Maybe had it himself, but he's not projecting it like he has these last couple of days. It's, it's pretty awesome. And yeah. Simon is trying to win this thing. The trophy made by Andrew Rich Orbital Creations. You can head over to the marketplace on Disc Golf United if you'd like to get some for your own tournament, your own club. They're pretty sweet. Oh, yeah. Show off the You got the Philo Mini still? Nope. Um, Put it right. in the car. Nah, fair enough. <laughs> Good job. Thanks. <laughs> Awesome, awesome trophies there. And one you could throw in your bag and keep with you as like a good luck charm on your next tournament even. I've got a bunch of these cool little wooden minis, man. These things are awesome. These Have you ever thrown a wooden disc? No, just one that had some wood chips in it. So when you hit a tree, it sounds like you hit a home run in baseball. Perfect. I know a lot about hitting trees with discs. I'm pretty savvy. <laughs> Superstar of this card. Disc time. Golf threads, sponsored by Innova Champion Discs. Out of Loveland, Colorado, make some noise for Joel Freeman! Joel Freeman, the old man of the bunch. <laughs> He's not very old at all. No. Low 30s? At most, yeah. Good. 
Green flag, good angle for Joe Freeman here Up on hole one. On it really box. is, isn't it? You kind of want to push He'd that like open. To give line. a shout out to Oregon Sports and Family Chiropractic for keeping his body correct this whole week and in his career. Sponsored by Infinite Discs out of Hillsboro, Oregon. Give it up for Cole Rodolfo! Everybody needs a hero. <laughs> a little bit too much hero energy on that swing. Yeah. Champion, sponsored by Discraft, out of Minocqua, Wisconsin. Give it up for Adam Hammond! What do you think about the forehand here, Philo? Love the idea. Feels safe, doesn't it? It does. Anywhere past the ball golf green sets you up for a pretty Fair shot into the disc Insulin. golf green. Yeah. Yep. A little bit early. Oh, yeah. There we go. Bounce. And last on the box for your chase card, your reigning 2022 Masters Cup champion, sponsored by Prodigy, out of Urbandale, Iowa. Let's make some noise for Gannon. Seventeen-year-old prodigy throwing prodigy, and he's like a fresh seventeen too, no doubt. out of the sky in a hurry. That probably helped him out a little bit there. I think so. We have Brian Earhart on the ground with PTGA's Grant Zellner. We're going to send it down to Portland and Brian. Take it away, sir. Brian here with DGN. I'm joined by Grant Zellner of the PTGA. Grant, it's been electrifying out here in Portland. Tell us what you're witnessing from the perspective of brand manager. Oh, one of the things I love about this sport is the fact that you can adapt the sport to just about any climate, uh, any geography, just anywhere you can play disc golf. This is what, the seventh uh, so, uh, Elite Series event of the year, plus a handful of Silver Series, a major worked in there, and this is at least the, the fifth or sixth different atmosphere that we've seen disc golf. We've seen the Pacific Northwest this week. We've seen rainy conditions and the pros handling those conditions. And uh, it just it, it makes me want to go home and, and throw, no matter what the weather is, the moment I get off the plane, <laughs> I get back to where I live. Well, it's an important part of the season for the Disc Golf Pro Tour, but also an important part of the season for the PDGA. Tell us what we have going on right now. Indeed, yeah. We mentioned this a couple of days ago, and it bears repeating. Uh, all of the candidates are in for the upcoming Board of Directors elections. They come up in July. We wanted to give you plenty of time to get to know each and every one of these candidates, and some of their platforms are extensive. They've got a lot of goals and a lot of priorities, and you need to find the candidate that most closely matches your priorities and the directions that you want to see the sport of disc golf go so that you can vote when elections open in July. You heard the man. Make your voice heard. Make sure you go to pdga.com and vote back to you in the booth. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate that. Coral Dolan doing some chilling. Well, Burr readies his second. What are you firing into this green if you have a, a forehand or a backhand of equal skill, Philo? 
Uh, I like the four uh, equal skill. I'm mm -hmm. probably going to go to the backhand play just because of how the OB is shaped. There's a lot of OB along the left side, and it seems like the wind is kind of pushing against them right now, kind of tailing, pushing up the screen and to the left. Mm -hmm. Just kind of what I saw from the Leafs or the feathers in the background blowing around. I could be wrong, but, you know, it's takes some courage to throw it at an OB line and hold, you know, a little air there and the thing doesn't come back, I'm probably going to keep the disc over safe ground longer. That feels like the right play. Burr will flex a forehand, so keeping it safe most of the way. Ooh, not late though. Well executed shot there from Gannon. Getting a little past the basket, even putting back up the hill. Well done. Ahead, Tom putting for par on two. And you're not missing Albert on the course today. Absolutely not. Big putt there for the Estonian. Love to see that. Back to one. Hamas throwing two. Draw it up much better than that, huh? Nestled in beautifully. Side arm, side arm, and a tap in birdie coming up for Adam Hammis on hole one. Gossage to start two for two. This is a man we've seen get very hot. Oh, yeah. Have some issues with the putter and OTB kind of mid round or mid event, but then yeah. boom, right? You'd made that adjustment, it seemed overnight. The really last round, right? It, on. it was amazing. It was so, so fun to watch that improvement. Freeman on one, throwing three. Not a bad effort there from Joel Freeman. That'll get him inside circle one, downhill oh, putt. Oh, that was that was a second shot, wasn't it? That he? was. He yeah. was safe. He was barely inbounced, right? It was Cole's shot who went flying Thank past you. the OB line and He's just making his drop, I believe. And okay, there we go. Making his mark, rather. That's beautiful in Portland right now. It seems to be. Seems a bit breezier, though, in previous days. Yeah. Nicely done. <clears throat> Certainly does seem the majority of the field has a serviceable sidearm game these days, doesn't it? Yep. You know, a lot of these holes out here have a lot of left to right movement to them. It's really almost the exception. Yeah. If you don't. You're going to see the next hole, obviously, hole two. Oh, very, yeah. very favorable to the sidearm list if you're doing the Simon Lazat line out and around. But throwing it down the middle, that hyzer flip with the OB off to the left. Scary proposition. That is Paige Pierce with a baby. Back to one. Burr with the birdie look. Burr currently 10 behind Simon. Gonna need to touch them all. He wants to sniff that lead. <laughs> Burr does the whole routine, gets settled. Knocks that in, opening hole birdie. Freeman. Birdie look. Oh. Nice 
nice confident putt there from Joel Freeman on the elevated basket with the steep drop off. OB lurking just behind. Rodolin to save par. No problem for Rodolin. Drop in birdie for Hammes before they head to two. And this tournament coverage is sponsored by Fortnite. A new season starts this week. Check out the link in the description on YouTube. Whether you know it or not, you have a brand, and we have discs. Let's put them together and make something really cool. We've got plenty of discs and are ready to stamp or Dimax them however you'd like. Isn't it expensive? Well, guy who asks convenient questions, at Dynamic Discs, you can see what's available and fill out the form to see what it'll cost you before you even order. Sometimes I fill it out just for fun, because you can watch the numbers go. Anyways, head to dynamicdiscs.com custom to place your custom order and grow your brand, whatever that is. Fierce and passion, like those are the two things that I am on the course. You hit a tree, scramble. Get back in the circle, get apart. It's a pretty look, but it's a long one. What a make. Don't forget about me, I'm here. I'm here and I'm staying for a while. To me, airborne is the expression of flight. And that's kind of the representation of the brand that we wanted to build. The visual that we wanted to get from this stamp is the connection between man and nature and man's connection to the natural world that, that people are able to find through disc golf. We wanted to have a disc that all players could trust. It'll be a great tool for, for a lot of players. It feels great to have Prodigy have enough trust and faith in me to make this disc for me and to make this full line. And I'm so excited to be able to share it with the whole disc golf world. Hello, ma'am. I'm here to rescue your cat. Oh, thank goodness. Oh. Your cat is safe and sound. Thank you so much. The Dynamic Discs Retriever is an essential tool for just about any round of disc golf. Oh, no. Somebody help. Oh, well, that's my cue. The Dynamic Discs Retriever keeps your discs in your bag longer. The Portland Open is brought to you by Dynamic Discs. Be dynamic. There was this kid, we can call him a kid because he's 14 years old, who was going to be swinging on the swing sets up until two minutes was called. He'd fly off the swings, run to the tee box, and then he was going to beat you. And that was David Wiggins. Superboy, David Wiggins. This little kid, he's just stout. I mean, he grew up with basically every single distance record that you could possibly have. He is a power machine. You know, his game impresses me all the way across the board. Just an insane talent. He was just 
built to throw a disc. Most people putt for dough, that means throws for dough. Throws far. Surely does. This guy, birdie on 18. Self-lead card. Sharks smelling blood in the water. Hold two. Hamas. <laughs> well done, sir. Asking for go. Oh Ooh. my. Hamas. Dropping a dime. Two holes in a row. Yes, sir. Back to back birds coming for Adam Hamas. Back to back bullseyes, even. It's time. Oh. And if you're watching on YouTube today, consider subscribing to the Disc Golf Network. You get action like this all year long. Four days of, God, it's almost like 12 hour days at Disc Golf. <laughs> For you, it has been. Yeah. <laughs> In this booth all day, yes. talking Disc Golf, talk, talking shop. <laughs> Gotta love it. Plenty of hours of entertainment at home. Wow, look at this guy has opened up around Portland. That's crazy. Thought it had a potential of getting wet and all of a sudden the sun's coming out. Well, it is Oregon, so you never know how you long it'll last. You never know. <laughs> you never know what's around the next mountain or hill. I'm sure they'll take it for now. Let's check out our course close-up powered by our friends at UDISC while we wait for them to tee off. Yeah, man, Glendivere. Very, very beautiful facility over here in Portland, Oregon. Two ball golf courses, east and west. We are on the west, excuse me, on, yeah, we're on the west side. No, east side east this side. time, right? Yeah, west side. East side. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Flipping it over. Mm -hmm. Got Jeff Spring on the redesign this time. Yeah. And uh, Dustin Keegan, right, working yeah, together to make yeah. this one happen. I know Jeff spent like five or six trips out here to get this thing dialed in. Yeah, and they did a really nice job blending everything together here, not just staying kind of consistent with the, with the, you know, yeah. excuse me, the ball golf course, really mixing it up and weaving through the golf course on different angles, you know, yeah. really using the topography here and making a fun layout. Yes, they are. That's the easy design, right? Using the golf course, but they yeah, for sure. Yeah, that that's when you have to share the course, but they don't have to. That's all them this weekend on this side, and I think they did a fantastic job, really, just setting the guys up for some challenging shots, having to make some interesting decisions, challenging a lot of OB lines. I like what they've done with the greens. A lot of times, disc golf greens can be pretty boring and not a lot to them. You know, they have to make some choices on some of these greens if they want to get aggressive. Baskets perched up on hills, yep. steep rollaways, OB tucked in right behind, you know, water hazards, a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Disc golf, excuse me, ball golf hazards with the sand traps and everything. Yeah. I like the look of this track. Yeah, there's also some super runnable putts, too. It's, Absolutely. It's a, it's a great variety. It's a nice mix of yeah, everything, you I know. Like I that. think they did a good job. They put the elevated baskets, I think, in the right places. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously nice to have it on a finishing hole, but, you know, maybe up on a little mogul like they did on hole one, so. Free stuff. That was a par save on two. And a good one. And that's some good stuff right there. Joel Freeman connecting from outside circle. Is he still your circle two leader? I imagine he would be. Oh, Gavin Babcock. Oh, that's no, that's all rounds. And Bradley Williams. That was Rattalan with a nice birdie. Gavin Babcock. Heard that name a few times recently, and haven't we? Welcome Champions back Cup. to the 2022 Portland Open presented by Dynamic Discs. We are here for the lead card of the final round of the MPO division. Let's make some noise! <laughs> Up first on the tee, your reigning OTB champion, sponsored by Discmania and leading the tournament out of Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. Give it up for Simon Lazat! <laughs> FD for Simon. Understable fairway. Oh, yeah. Simon is safely in the fairway on one. Up next. 
left on the team, make sure you ask him for his double crap, double G craft jerky, sponsored double by crap. Innova Champion Discs, out of Hawthorne, Florida. Let's make a ra loud round of applause for Garrett Gerthy! Tagged the flagpole yesterday. Can't imagine it would happen two days in a row. Rock three for G. And he navigates the flagpole this time. Nice slow right turn. That's going to be a, a shot there for double G and off to the left side of the fairway. Sponsored by There's Discraft. There's the dent on the flagpole. Five-time world there. champion at Huntington Beach, California. Give it up for Paul McBath. Fading out a little fast, Ian. Yep. Uh, looks like the wind got and a hold of that. Paul McBeth box. going out fairway Your left. Super Bowl scramble champion out of Northwest Georgia. <laughs> out of Lawrenceville, Georgia, sponsored by Prodigy Discs. Let's hear some roars for Isaac Robinson. I know it's early. That out of bounds from Paul hurts huge. It does. Definitely not going to help in the momentum department. F3 for Isaac. Oh, yeah. Done from Isaac Robinson. Fairway left. It is. Brian, it is looking absolutely beautiful. The weather wasn't look like we were going to end up with this. Will it hold through the round? You know, Ian, it seems like Portland is just really not making up its mind when it comes to the weather. We got absolutely pelted right before the chase card for about 10, 15 minutes, and now we have an absolutely beautiful day, blue skies, wind is down to about 5, 10 miles an hour. I mean, we'll see. There are some dark clouds in the distance, but we're not projected to have those come till later, so fingers crossed. Hey, let's hope it holds on. And here are your Canna current conditions. That's great disc golf weather. And Brian's saying the wind is probably down from there as well. I imagine so. If the weather's pushed on, those numbers are likely to fall. Temperature might rise up a few degrees as the sun heats up the ground and might see a little more humidity as well with some of that yeah. moisture burning off. All in all, though, it should be a really nice day for disc golf. Hamas. Two down through two. Put the rain jacket away. Another bullseye? Nope, no, just outside. outside yep, towards the back end of circle two. Does stay in bounds, Adam Amos. Mm -hmm. Long range attempt coming up. Long range specialist. He certainly is. When he's hot. He's dangerous from just about anywhere. Mm -hmm. Looking down at one's fairway, towards the top is where it really starts to bottleneck down for the green. And the white there just getting ready is Garrett Gerthy. Gerthy has 341 to the pin. He was much further than this yesterday after banging that flagpole. I'm sure he's going to feel mighty comfortable with this swing. One angle hyzer hanging out off to the right side. That pin high just inside circle one. Nice shot there from Double G. He didn't connect with that putt yesterday. Let's see if he can right the ship here. Beautiful pace on that approach. Absolutely. Such a nice luxury to be able to throw a slower speed disc. It is, especially on some faster yeah. surfaces like ball golf, you know, grass. A lot of these greens and even the rough are pretty pretty quick you know obviously their fairways are going to be cut low but even the, the rough areas are pretty pretty slick McBeast 320 needs to get up and down 
I know it's early. Hangs that well off to the right side. Wants that to sit and quit. There it is. Next to act should be Robinson. But before that, Hammis for birdie from circle two. Looks like Wynn pushes that down just a hair online. Adam Ham is unable to connect for the early turkey. <laughs> Loving these aerial views with the drone. Aren't they great? Such so cool. We're going to get a perspective on how big these trees are around the property. Our drone operator, Kyle, just doing fantastic work out there. That's Simon. 241. Very similar look to his... Approach from yesterday, gonna have to go slow turn over here. So touchy, the speed, just about as good as it was yesterday. Simon Lozada in business on one for birdie. Over to Isaac. Right around 250 for Isaac. Done. Ian Lazat will have dueling birdie putts. Joel Freeman. Birdie look on three. Mm. Catch his top band, Joel Freeman. Nearly grabbing a bonus putt there. Your final grouping and gallery making their way down one's fairway. Look at that. See it, people. It looked like it was pretty lined up all along that left side as these guys were it teeing is. off. Right side, too. Should be a nice bit of energy out there to get the guys hyped up and ready to play. Ready to put on a show for these spectators. Some great fans around the Portland area. Portland loves disc golf. What's your favorite? Did I ask you this one? Your favorite Oregon course? Oh, it's Milo all day, man. Well, besides Milo, sorry. Besides Milo. Yeah. Oof. See, that makes it hard, doesn't it? Man, Pier's pretty pretty. I like that. Mm -hmm. Some really tight lines out there for such a. It seems like there's a lot of airspace, but it's really not. <laughs> no, yeah, that's what Elaine picked too. And then I asked her, "Have you ever? If she's ever played uh, Whistler's Bend, have you played that one?" I haven't. I've driven past it, but I didn't oh, stop and play. Man, it's it's worth a stop down in Roseburg. Mm -hmm. An absolute gem. Girthy, a birdie look. That's the same start as yesterday for Double G. Pretty dangerous putt toward, putting towards the slope. and mm -hmm. Can be a little nervy putting him up on the chains. Robinson. That's solo third. <laughs> Simon. Exactly what he needed right there to start this round off. If you're a Simon Lazat fan, one more stroke, a little bit more cushion for Simon. Paul to save par. And Garrett will drop in a par as well. Philo, how's your Fortnite game? Not very good. <laughs> yeah, I, I tried one time. I got my butt whooped up by a bunch of eight-year-olds. I'm sure these yeah, little eight-year-olds are savvy with that stuff. <laughs> they, are, computers these days, huh? they are sponsoring our tournament coverage this weekend. And a new season starts this week. You can check out the link to the description on the YouTube page.
hit this ace, I'd give five grand to the mom. If disc golf is your game, make Gotta Go, Gotta Throw your disc golf warehouse. With a huge selection of discs, bags, baskets, carts, shirts, and more. Gotta go, gotta throw.com has all the tools to take your game to the next level. Shop online or our Golden Valley, Minnesota store. Free shipping with all online orders over $75. Online or in store, get what you need for the game you love. Gotta go, gotta throw.com, your disc golf warehouse. In the game since 1993. Luke Sampson throwing two. We're on hole five, carrying the water here. What a shape. It's looking real nice. Oh, I think that bounced off the assembly on the bottom for Luke. Looking nestled for Sampson. Very challenging par four, 910 feet. Simon clearing out the gallery for the Simon line, it looks like. So when y'all paying attention yesterday? Yeah. While they got quick, I want to mention Garrett Gerthy, one of his Florida buddies, just passed away. Uh, Gene Stuckey, so he's in his thoughts and prayers this weekend. Playing Condolences, for, man. Yeah, it's already here. For. He's a great guy. Swinging the crowd out a bit wider, <laughs> just in case of. Yeah, just tell him heads up, just in case. The wind looks wrong for this shot, Philo. It's a left to right tail, so. Uh, not with Simon's arm speed. It's definitely going to affect the shot a little bit, but he's going to have to bust it up and around that squatch feather. Does so safely. Oh, awesome camera work. Gallery groaning. Awesome shot work by Lazat. Master artist with Frisbee in his hand, yeah. Simon Lazat, spiking it in from way outside. Disc That's golf is better when Simon is awesome, man. No doubt. I love this. Robinson. Going the more technical down the middle line, Heiser flip. Brian, I'm told you got a pretty good Isaac Robinson story. Yeah, he, uh, he hustled on out here from graduation, you were saying? Yeah, you know, he is literally living the dream right now, Ian. He graduated college just recently from Tacoa in northeast Georgia, took off right away from graduation, and he's out here on his very first tournament of full-time touring. I can't imagine the feeling of joy he's having right now. Oh, wow, that's awesome. I didn't know he was. this was his kickoff to his tour. That's awesome. Congratulations on graduating as well. Yeah, Isaac. Or sorry, Garrett Gerthy. Ooh, that's overturned. Wants that to sit down. There is a hazard over there. Hard to tell. Macbeth. Is he looking at the Simon line? He is. Uh, inspired. I like it. Simon, or excuse me, Paul hung it out there a bit wider than did Simon. Must be safe. Oh, tombstone. Looks like he's just shy of the hazard in between circles for Macbeth. And here is our patented Simon line, and he might be charging Macbeth royalties on that shot. He might be. He tried to steal his line. Simon hugging the tree a little bit tighter. Able to get that thing to hyzer back against the wind. Simon better help Sunstein. He's going to head over to sunsteinlaw.com after the round and patent that Simon line. Maybe trademark it. Maybe make an NFT out of it even. You know? Got the NBA top shots. I mean, some disc golf top shots, man. Why not? Yeah. Let's do it. We got a pretty good one to submit, huh? Yeah. I can, I can think of one. Aaron Gossage for birdie on five. Aaron Gossage, bounce back birdie after bogey. Love to see that. They are gathered around the green of two.
Garrett Gerthy, 82, Robinson, and 85 for their birdie looks. Hard to be super accurate on those types of putts going against the grain. Long, slow Anheuser putt. Don't want it to turn too hard to the right. Not the best you can do sometimes, just get close. Alden Harris hanging out with Garrett Gerthy, missing the cut yesterday. Looks like Double G's going, is that the AVR X3? Or the Sonic? Sonic. There's a Sonic toss from Double G. Pace good, not enough turn, but tap in par coming up. Yeah. Luke Sampson. Oh, it went further than we thought. Come back birdie. Death putt, two. Off the koozie. Yeah. Back to two. Macbeth, birdie look. Grabs a little rim left side, Macbeth. This thing's starting to slip. Yep. Chances. Off the mark there early, two holes in a row. Simon's going to get two in a row, it looks like. And Simon's definitely going to start feeling a little less pressure now that Double G is going to go par par. Macbeth's going to go par par. He already had five on Isaac, so that's just yeah. going to really take a lot of pressure off Simon to be perfect. They needed to put the pressure on early. Right away. Yeah. yeah. You can't come out flat when you're trying to chase a guy like Simon. He's not a guy who's scared of the moment. He's been around a long time. He knows what it takes to get a, a W out here on tour. Simon with a drop in birdie. Macbeth cleans up par, as will Robinson. Your leader snags a stroke on the final grouping. Hopping over to four and Burr. Tee shot. Laser beam from Gannon Burr right down the middle of the fairway. That's going to be right there. And he is halfway in circle one. Gossage. Beautiful flex shot from Gossage, looking for that to hook up. Turn left, ah, it just kind of hangs out there. Not quite enough stable edge to make the final turn. What do you think he's got left on that putt? I'm guessing somewhere in between circles is my guess okay. for Aaron Gossage. Circle two is what they got it on U disc. That's is right it? around what I figured, 45 footer or so. Okay. Pin high to the right. It's a tough shot to get in there. Let's check out Philo's philosophy brought to by our friends at blackinkdisc.com, a premium disc golf store. Well, these guys did not get off to a hot start to make things interesting for Simon, and he <laughs> has. I think now it's just going to be a matter of physical endurance for Simon. Just keep attacking those OB lines with confidence. He's been doing a great job of it all weekend. Simon, PD2 on the T of three. Mm. And a huge thanks to Black Ink Discs. Sponsoring Phyllis Philosophy. Head over there if you'd like to check out some sweet stamps. I've got a huge selection of discs. A little underthrown there from Simon Lazat catches a fairway middle tree. Have a little work left to get par. Robinson. FX2 for Isaac. Fairway driver. Looks better. Great. Isaac Robinson snuggled up close. Two for three start for Isaac. Girthy. Double G going the elixir. This is an Inva disc. What is it? I have no idea. <laughs> they haven't sent me one. Or if they have, I haven't heard of it. You haven't opened it yet? <laughs> it's in LA, man. That's probably where it's at. Yeah. Let's, let's see what Double G does with it. Got some late fade on that, Double G. 
right outside circle one. Maybe a pace off the whisker there for Double G. Had a pretty good run of putts from that range this week. Mm -hmm. Macbeth. The elixir is a PD2. There you go. Same disc Simon through. That's going to finish a bit early and left outside of circle one. A lot of pressure on the putting game early. For those guys. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Rodalin on five. This will go far if he wants it to. This guy's arm was unreal yesterday. Look at how high up in the air he got that thing in. He's looking for a long Stay carry. Turn. Stay turn. There we go. There we go. Yeah, boy. He's going to land safe, almost past the ball golf green, some 200 yards down the hill. Mm -hmm. Monster shot from Rodalin. Simon entered the day with two, has built two more. And we're only two in. Well, he's going to lose one. Well, maybe not potentially, but yeah, so yeah. far so good for Simon Lazat. Nice solid start. Hamas, second shot on the fifth. The hill. Yeah, too There's much go there OB for. Yeah, there. I believe that is going to be out of bounds for Adam Hammes. Putting for birdie from circle two is you oh, but they might not. Safe. Hey, you never. Mm. They might not know. Simon, one, two, three, into the pin. No problem for Simon. Yes, it is the property line at the back fence oh, there. Oh, really? Yeah, so that cart path looks to be safe. Huh. I don't know. Maybe no, not. I don't not, know. Man. I don't think so. Yeah, I saw someone go with earlier. It looked like the near side of that cart path should be the line. Yeah. We'll update you as we find out more information. Macbeth from Circle T for Birdie. Seven back to get to six. There's a five-time putt for you. Start to claw his way back into this, the beast. Mm -hmm. Grabbing his first stroke of the day on Simon. Double G. Looks like, looks like he's got a little bit of tree hanging down in his face. Ooh. Having to go to the straddle to the right. Is he going to spin it, you think, or does he find some airspace? Well, we do know, like, Double G likes to loft the disc quite a ways above the band. Right. Have a dive bomb. To close the gap to three. Double G able to connect from circle two. He's had a real successful week on the putting green for... But his stats had been previously. He's doing pretty good. 38% circle two, 87% circle C1X for G this weekend. Very solid numbers. Really good. Simon to save par and maintain three strokes. Simon casually slides that one in there. Pars won't hurt him as long as he's not giving up two at a time. He's got some room and plenty of green grass in front of him to keep that... Stiff arm on the fellas right there on the lead card with him. Robinson throws in the birdie from five feet. Two for three start. He's tied with, I oh know, solo third now. As you disc update, Spur. Fairway of five. Beautiful looking shot at again, and Burr just sit right over there. That's awesome. And Burr. Big crossing over the water. Using the backstop perfectly. Gossage. Here's that birdie look you were guessing at. Ugh, robbery. Boo. That was. Nothing you can do about that, Mr. Gossage. Yeah. Back over to five for Freeman's second. Uh, looks like the wind grabbed Joel Freeman's shot up. That's going to come up a bit short and right. 
gravity grabs a hold of that one. Better than short and online. That's true. <laughs> we don't want to be out of bounds. Joel Freeman's going to have a long look back up the hill. Up ahead on hole five. For the moment, here is your top ten. Nate Sexton making an appearance. Oh, look at that. Seven down through ten today. Seeing that? He's on a heater. Jeez. There he is. Cruise control activated for one. Nate Sexton four under for his last four holes. He is on hole 11. Now we got one, two, five, and then seven through 10. Wow. It's a nice little stretch. Mm -hmm. A couple other players making some moves. Ezra's on the move. Chris Clemens. Andrew Presnell. <laughs> Guys getting it very respectably through their round so far. Robinson takes the T of four, 450, par three uphill. That's gonna finish off to the right a little bit of the basket and safe. Mm -hmm. Lengthy putt coming up for Isaac. Girthy. And you guessed this was a road runner yesterday? You were right. How about them apples? Big Sky Annie from Double G pushing the boundary line, curling back towards center fairway. I'll call that between circles again, maybe a step or two. Good shot, just a slight overturn in the air. Just a hair. Macbeth. as well it sounded like he didn't like it too much but that's starting to work its way towards the basket but does dry short. up yeah a bit short for Macbeth gonna have to put around that last guardian tree and Simon DD3 roller coming up like the action on this shot Ian we're seeing two different types of rollers right sky rollers and this is more of a cut roller where What's Simon up? really just gets over on it right away and that just ran out a bit long. Oh, a little long. Yeah, it's a little long. A lot long. A lot long. <laughs> right intentions, a little too much gas for Simon. Yeah. It's tough to be spot on with rollers, man. Yeah, especially when it's windy, grass can do things. Radolin, after that smash, is disking down for his second on five. That looked to be some kind of overstable putter. Yeah. Maybe mid-range, just a little tap shot across the pond. That tee shot was a monster. That was a big boomer. Freeman, upshot leaked right, a long birdie look. I think I see a circle two whisker in front of him. 66, 67 yeah. feet, somewhere around there for Joel Freeman. Cash is a huge make. That's one way to not give up on the hole. Yeah, I don't think that helped the circle two percentage, though. <laughs> that was from, <laughs> from the, the fairway, fairway, no doubt. Beyond all circles for Joel Freeman. It's Angel. Get some pound for that one. Radolin now lining up the birdie just a few moments after. Casual. Also a two for five start for Cole. Bird, that's a birdie. I really like the shape of that shot he threw on his second. That was beautiful slow right turner. Had the perfect pace on it. Let the ground take the remaining speed off the disc. Just so well executed from such a young player. That's a high quality shot. He does the very technical well thought out shots. Robinson with a long bid. That was from about 110 feet. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's me or you, Simon's at 80, so it's probably you, Garrett. Actually, it might be Simon, huh? Potentially. Yeah. He did run it quite yeah. a ways long. 
Could be some 75, 80 feet away as well for Simon. Oh, yeah. He's just got to the back of circle one. Now creeping up on circle two. And he is outside. Fairway deep for Simon Lazat. Bonus putt if he can snap this one in the basket. Simon's been missing a lot of these left, and there's another one who <laughs> leaks up a little short and left. And tap and par coming again for Simon Lazat after back to back birdies to open. Macbeth to grab a stroke. Dini with the chains thought like it was in for a second. Like a phase through the basket. Yeah, this doesn't touch a thing, unfortunately. The opportunity slips through the fingers of Macbeth's hands. Girthy. Opportunity for Double G to make things interesting in a two-stroke advantage for Lazat once again. Double G connects. Wow. If you're a Double G fan, you'll love to see that. Big time putt for Double G in the clutch. Definitely needs to connect on every last one of them if he has any hopes of catching Simon Lazat. Not backing down from this battle. Awesome to watch. Garrett came to play. He knows how huge this would be for him. These tour wins are so hard to snap up, especially against guys like Simon Lazat. Beth saves par. He will stay six back of Simon. He drops in par. One more of those for Robinson. In the first third of this course, we haven't even got through six holes. It's already starting to feel like a two-man race. Yeah, Robinson and Macbeth are going to need to push hard to get in the mix. Big time back-to-back -back birdies for Double G. Both putts from outside circle one. A stat that's much improved this weekend over previous weekends, that's for sure. Absolutely, and huge thanks to Zuko for rolling back that replay. They will head to fives for some huge tee shots coming up from the final grouping. At first glance, looking at the scorecard, seeing 901 par four, I'm like, ooh, boy, and then realize which hole they put it on. It's downhill the majority of the yeah. way. Got a nice steep hill to launch off of. Plenty of green grass out there. The ball golf green and hazard bunkers are kind of in a range you could see some shots leak into there but there's plenty of space where you could play for angle set yourself up for a mid 300s entrance into the green something one angle one turn well thought out hole but these guys do have the option to kind of push for a little more and have the easier approach mm -hmm. yeah but cole with that putter approach is that was unbelievable i know from the men's tees it is a legit par four at 260 some odd yards so it's a long ways to get parallel to that golf green. Double G putting the wraith on a big old hyzer. Yeah, he's playing for angle here, making sure he opens up that second shot angle. Lots of green grass off to the right side of this basket coming in. Speaking of KJ, here's the Kevin Jones reverb from Isaac. Sends this down the middle, watching this from the drone. Asking this thing to get left, get left. Looks like it did in time. Just sneaks past the first hazard bunker. Looks like maybe right even on the edge of it. Yeah, just short left of it right there. Wow. That should do. Macbeth. Like 
casual swing from the five time. A little bit off to the right on the release, fading back in a hurry, and he's going to be over there in Isaac Robinson's neighborhood. Simon with the cloud breaker. Really testing the boundary of the tree line on the right yes. side, Simon Lazat. But here, this thing comes looking back and right dies out awesome. just in front of the bunker as well. All players safely in the fairway. This hole really is all about that second shot. How close can you get to the target and keep that putt easy, stress free? Joel Freeman. Birdie putt. Wow. Oh, you heard it from him. Enough said. Yep. Albert Tom. Big pretty putt for him as well. Um, off on the release. A couple of ticks. Needed some more air under that one. Burr. Burr, same story. Good line, not enough air. Calvin Heimberg for Birdie. Oh, a Heimberg sighting. Vinny had a strong showing yesterday. A quiet day here on a Sunday closing round. Just one down on the day after that make. And a tie for 17th down five spots is Heimberg. Not a whole lot of shake up on this leaderboard. Things have been kind of set from the jump. A couple of guys making their way up from in the mid teens. Sexton and the Clemens now squeaking into the top 10. But Ezra Aderhold also on a move, still six down through 10 holes. Other than that, pretty quiet down the leaderboard. I think Ezra is leading T to green. Yeah, he is. 17 strokes over the field tee to green for Ezra this weekend. That's a nice stat to be leading on. Definitely going to give you a lot of opportunities to score. But unfortunately, he is putting only .2 better than your average competitor. Yep, that's that's why we're not watching him. Yeah. <laughs> Macbeth back on the fairway of five. Has to attack with the forehand. Should be a force for Paul. Nice little early cut there from Macbeth. Yeah. Looks like it bounces inside circle one, just below and to the right of the basket. Well executed shot for the five time. Paul was 400 feet to the pin there. Yeah, that was a casual little flick for <laughs> Macbeth. Little early cut on that overstable driver. Double G, 386. Thank you, Bushnell. Also a little cut action on that swing for double G. Straighten the disc out. Planned and line. Yep, beautifully executed into the face of the hill. Comfortable putt coming up for double G for birdie. Yeah. Maybe putting a little pressure on Simon. Yeah, Simon's got to respond. He knows that. What did Simon see on that bush now? 380. a little more texture to this one. You see the disc really starting to hang over. It's not hooking up fast enough, Ian. Circle two. And that's and way well. back there. Simon Lazat off the mark on the approach. On five, door ajar for a double G to snag another one. One stroke advantage. It could be. I mean, Simon's going to have a super scary putt, putting back towards the grade of the hill and water OB line. Choices for Lazat here. Robinson second. 378. This is looking real nice, Ian. Oh, my goodness. Beautiful shot there from Isaac Robinson. Perfect shape on that one. Earn him another birdie here in the early goings here on a final round. All right. While they walk to those putts, we'll take a break. Back to the action in Glendevere in just a few moments. 
Hey, it's Zach from Power Grip USA. We've heard from so many disc golfers just like you that you can't wait to see what Europe's number one disc golf shop can do here in the United States. Well, the wait is nearly over. Launch is nearly here, which means this is your final weekend to sign up for 20% off your first order at PowerGripUSA.com. We'll send you all the details by email when we open, including that promo code. We can't wait to show you what it means to be a pretty good disc golf shop. We'll see you soon. I feel like the Destroyer is the, is the benchmark of distance drivers on tour. Freeman on the TF7. Difficult uphill drive here at seven. Try to climb as far as you can. That looked like enough. That looked like a nice shot there from Joel Freeman. Mm -hmm. Simon with a lengthy birdie bid. And again, you can tell what's behind the basket lurking. That was a really nice looking putt. Does run up dry, just a hair short. Falls under the basket, but that's opening the door for Double G and the rest of the gang here to snag another stroke. Macbeth to close his gap to five. Oh, off the mark for Macbeth. Another putting error. Weird. Very strange. Girthy, a birdie look to close the gap to one. Double G's closest to a big time show is Santa Cruz, yeah, right? Yeah, that NT win. The Silver Series. Oh, that was an NT. Was an NT back That's then, right. Yeah. So he has not yet got himself in the Elite Series dub. He is definitely on the Pro Tour. On the Pro Tour. Yeah, the qualifier there, I guess. Robinson puts in another birdie. That's three out of five for Robinson. Certainly is. Hat trick for Double G. Three out of five for Isaac. Two out of five for Simon and Paul McBeth. Slow start. Bunch of pars surrounding his one birdie on three. It's getting good on the Disc Golf Network. The only place to watch it live, Philo. Got to subscribe. Holler at your friends if they're at your place. Maybe talk them into subscribing. Go watch it at their place next weekend. Maybe start trading off house parties. Yeah. It's about to get exciting. Summer months are right around the corner. We've got lots of great disc golf courses coming up, and you have to subscribe to watch the Beaver State Fling. Oh, my it's going to be a good one, as usual. Milo McIver always brings some excitement. But unusual is the live finish on Disc Golf Network for the first time ever. No doubt. Make sure you tune in next Sunday, June 12th, for final round coverage right here on the Disc Golf Network. Burr on seven, second. Keep going. Oh, last tree, but he's inside circle one. A little bit of a straddle out, but that shouldn't stress out Gannon Burr. Nicely executed shot there. Comfortable with all style of putting is that, man. Double G, T of six. There is a mandatory right there. He slides past it. Needs a lot of overstable to get back. That's the elixir again. So It was. Oh. It's overstable, but he really ripped over on that yeah. thing, and it took all the fade out of it. Robinson, go with a D model OS.
I like the shape. Let's see if it unravels on time. Here it comes. Does fade a little bit short below the basket towards the center of the fairway, maybe creeping on circle two. Mm -hmm. Macbeth, huge missed opportunity on five. Beth also really rips over on that one, headed towards the gallery. Brian. It's going to fade out. Brian, do you think is there kind of a headwind they're not feeling on this hole, or are they just pulling them over? No, I mean, Ian, you're right, technically saying there is a headwind, but it is so gentle that it's barely affecting. You know, the disc they're throwing to get this disc back to the left is overstable enough to beat this wind, so no, not that bad. All right, Simon hanging his PD2 out there with... Double G's elixir. Nobody really able to find the right motion on this drive. Such a technical shot with that mandatory looming off the tee pad. Got to put that early flex on it. Multi-angle shots. Freeman on seven, throwing two. We saw the drive. This is the second shot, and that's deep inside. Even bullseye for Joel Freeman. Nicely done there. That should get him to three under par. All right. Oh. Oregon native Nate Sexton, down from a little south of Portland, doing the state proud. Yes, wow. he is, stringing along five so far. Nice shooting there for Nate Sexton. Grab the par 5'11", that's a good get. Absolutely. No, he's playing with this guy, Ezra Aderhold, who also ripped off five in there a row. There you go, there. That's a Matching thing. shots, is that right? A thing? When you, mm -hmm. you're playing with a guy who's, you know, you kind of get in a flow. It's fun when that happens. You just you don't really know who it may be that day, but uh -huh. every once in a while when it happens, and you just kind of get your rabbit out there and you chase him down. You know. I like that. Hamas. Good make on seven for birdie. Slower start than he needed, but still a good score. Simon. Simon is 140 into the pin. Simon Lazat seemed not to have much of an option for any kind of a bid, so wisely just chucks it under the basket. Robinson from maybe a couple feet closer. That's going to be off the mark to the left. Slide a few paces past. Shouldn't be very stressful for Isaac for par. And Girthy and Macbeth also out in the fairway beyond all circles. McBeast up first with those looks. 91 feet. This is not the range Macbeth wants to be making putts from if he's going to try to run this tournament down. He's had a lot of circle two bids already. Yeah, it's not the range you really want to be putting from when you're trying to put the heat on somebody. We're accustomed to seeing him making some of those putts here and there, but that's not really the range that builds confidence. Double G, just a couple feet closer. Not really expecting to make much of those out there in that 90-foot range. It's just not realistic. Can't count on it anyway. Could definitely ignite your round should you be able to knock one in, especially when you're playing a bit flat as Macbeth is at the moment, but doesn't really have much of anything to build off of so far this round. Head to seven and Burr putting for Birdie. Okay. As Burr. expected. Wow. Cannon Burr, a little straddle out, and that's gonna slide him to five under par here through seven holes. Up two spots into solo sixth. Macbeth to save par. Oh boy, that's not helping at all either. Paul Macbeth's gonna fall back to par. Three putt bogey here at hole number six. Just uncharacteristic misses on five and six. Throwing in par. He will 
will stay one back of Simon. And while they're ahead of seven, we will take a break on the network back in just a few. I would recommend the Envy to every single person that plays this golf. This is such a good throwing putter. If you don't have an Envy in your bag, I don't know what you're doing. The Envy is one of the most pure, straight flying putters. Comes out clean, can handle power, it can handle touch. It's just very versatile. It holds any line that you're really putting it on. It's so good. So good, it's so good. Hello, we're Kenna. We're a Dutch growing company. We love plants and we want to tell you some cool things about them. Just like humans, plants can communicate. They can sense when another plant is close. Plants look out for each other too. They warn neighbors about nearby threats by secreting substances. And studies have shown that plants love a good tune. We love and understand plants. Let our passion excite you too. Welcome back to Glendevere. That was Gary Gerthy firing one up the fairway on seven. Robinson. Ooh. You could see it right out the hand. That was going to smack that tree. He does. That's going to be well out of position. Yeah. Par at best for Isaac. Simon. Going back to the roller. This got way up the hill yesterday. Right about the same spot. Nicely done from Simon Lazar. Again, going to that overstable roller with a DD3. Macbeth. Really tests the height on the window and just does tickle a little bit on the way out, but way up the hill for Macbeth. Fantastic tee shot. Look at that gallery. Over to eight, Freeman. Now we saw this play from him yesterday. Yes, we did, and that's looking real nice once again. Puts him out there way safe on the left side. It's going to have a little chip shot in the green. Yeah, it just takes all the obstacles out of the equation for your second. Surprising. More people don't do that one. Back to seventh fairway. Robinson with a very early tree hit. Birdie would take something crazy. Nicely done to get as much as he can out of that shot. And hole seven is our BII Damper Apparel Hole. You can buy some of their awesome shirts on the Pro Shop or hit them up if you need to make some shirts for your club, your tournament, whatever. We're rocking our Diameter Apparel right now. These are my favorite ones. Oh, yeah. The horizontal stripes. Although, I know, like you, the solid colors. Yeah. Dolan with a crazy roller line on eight. Or is it just an air shot? No, it's, no, a, roller. it's a roller. That pushes way, way, way up there. Wow. Pin high, probably. <laughs> probably inside 200 feet. Girthy back on seven's fairway. Similar lie to what we saw Joel Freeman have to deal with, tied up on a tree. <laughs> Boom sauce. Also my favorite flavor. What a shot. Double G showing off the arm on the uphill pull. Bounces it around the tree inside circle one. There's a fan holding a double G wraith over there. 
probably trying to get that guy's attention. Hey, can I get a signature? <laughs> I think he was doing us a favor and showing it to the cam. Macbeth throwing two. Airway center for Macbeth. It's all about touch and feel here. 385, totally comfortable distance. Plenty of space to work the disc. Just got to feel where those last trees are on the finish. Opting for the low burner, playing for the late skip. There's the circle one flag. He's in. Inside circle one for Macbeth. Let's see if he can right the ship and bounce back. Simon going to the PD for his second. Simon inside circle one almost got the vertical leap that he needed to hop in the chains. Seems like everybody's in business minus Isaac who hit early and probably somewhere in the fairway. A couple of paces off circle two. Mm -hmm. Ah, we have an eight sexton sighting. Over on hole 13. Fires it up the hill. Look great. Good. It's a dad type of day, I guess. Sexton and Simon. Any other dads on this list? I don't think so. Zach Johnson? No. Hmm. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. Burr. On eight, his second into the green. Uh, using the lettuce to slow him down. Count that birdie for Burr. Gannon's having a day. Yes, he is. Really starting to piece together his round. Five down through seven holes. Looks like he's lined up for another one. Six through eight. A very nice approach there. A little bit longer than I thought for Isaac, but mm -hmm. par save completed. Yeah. Just a second after a tap in. Down there is Macbeth stepping up to a birdie look just inside circle one. Who is this guy? And what has he done with Paul Macbeth? Somewhere someone has the voodoo doll out on Paul Macbeth. They want it to be somebody else's turn. <laughs> He's looking to the heavens wondering who it might be. This is not the guy we're used to seeing on Sunday rounds. No. Simon. Definitely needs this putt right now. <laughs> Does. Oh, oh my, my goodness. Are we looking at a tie ball game? Yes, we are. Simon Lazat has allowed Double G to track him down. Double G's definitely thrown some really nice looking shots. Simon's kind of been beating himself a little bit. Yeah, he's been out in the 100-foot range a lot or for these birdie looks and finally gave himself a look, but the putter failed him there. Yeah, he pushed that one off the right side. The tie. <laughs> Took seven holes, but he reeled them in. Happened a bit faster than I expected with the first two holes start, but yeah. things happen fast in sports and definitely in golf. You got to earn them all, man. There's no givens out here. Double G has earned his way into a share of the lead. Earning four strokes over the last five from Simon. Another par drop in after an uncharacteristic miss from Macbeth. Uncharacteristic miss from Simon as well. Back over to eight for Freeman's approach. Just a little chip shot for Joel Freeman. In the bullseye under the basket. Don't bump your head grabbing that one. Nicely done. 13 screen with Sexton. Pretty look. And he finally separated from Ezra as Ezra carded a bogey on that one, Philo. There it is. Nate Sexton running hot here on the final round. Uh, yeah. yeah, Cole. Yeah. 
Yeah. Jump putting. Wow. He's going to be fun to watch for a while. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm excited for the future of the sport. It's been a lot of fun the last few seasons to see, like, the talent just coming from every corner of the country, from across the pond, hanging out a little longer than they typically would or had been able to in the past. You know, the sponsorships are getting better, and the players are able to stay over a bit longer and compete and kind of find a rhythm. We've seen guys like Albert Tom have some success, and, you know, a couple of the other Swedes and Norwegians that came over and had some good, you know, a couple of Finns have come over and had some good experiences and hung out for three or four weeks. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun to see a more d bigger mix of players yeah. coming together in the talent pool, really pushing the sport forward and up. That was a common theme. The level is rising. The level is rising, and it still doesn't seem that it's hit the ceiling. No, it's not there quite. Nope. Just more and more guys are starting to put the pieces together and figure it out. Mm -hmm. We're getting better athletes in the sport as well. Kids playing from, you know, disc golf from the, they're little now. Like like a Gannon Burr, he's been playing since. I don't remember probably. there ever being so many guys over six four. That too. On tour, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, there's some monstrous guys out there. I mean, look yep. at Albert and guys like Luke and, <laughs> you know, like Jeremy Colling was like the biggest guy for a long time. And now, like, there's six or seven of them. Mm -hmm. Just massive, big fellas. Looks like they could be playing defensive end or tight end <laughs> on an NFL team or something. I keep forgetting the guy's name with the 80-mile-an-hour sidearm. That guy. Ryan Sheldon. Huge yeah, fella. He is a massive man. Brody Smith, another big fella. I think Ryan was like 6'8 or something. Yeah. yeah. Double G on 8. That's great. Just a casual pitch up the hill for Birdie. I mean, count that one already. No way he's blowing that. Robinson. Nice slow Anheuser there for Isaac. Needs to hustle. Well done. Out of bounds. Oh, that's the wrong side of the yeah, line. Yeah, it is, oh. man. Simon. PD2 for Simon. Should see a flex play. He liked the middle line yesterday. Looks like he's put a nice move on this again. He's going to be hanging out with G down there. Yeah. Great shot. Shot. And your leaders. And I'm rolling back my Rolodex of a brain thinking, man, there's only a couple of guys that seemed that big back in the day. Avery Jenkins and Marcus Kallstrom. Yeah, maybe Stoke. uh, Stokely's pretty tall, too. Yeah, but he wasn't really around like, much when I was torn in uh, my okay, earlier okay. days. You know, right. I'm just thinking of guys you'd see a bit. Yeah, yeah, fair. Macbeth, this roller gave him an eagle look yesterday. It's not going to do the same today. Oh, boy. That's got to keep turning. Sit down. Garrett Gerthy has earned himself a share of the lead, and it's been with incredible play. Let's check that out. At least a couple to circle two makes, right? I think two or three. Yeah, double G. He had a couple of opportunities early on in the round. Missed that birdie put on hole one. I think he had a long look at it on on two but then after that big big putts back back it's beautiful shot across the pond on five the lengthy par four coming in at 910 feet but for double g downhill that's child's play sticks that <laughs> one right on the mogul a little tap in birdie putt there and then beautiful approach here on a very tricky lie uphill might be a little slippery with the moisture recently gets a good plant this is that last tree. Good little bounce there. Tap in birdie. And next thing you know, Double G has got this thing all knotted up. Your co-leader. Yeah, circle two makes on three and four there. Let's check out our Paragon notable statistics for Simon and Garrett. Anything jumping for you, Philo? I mean, they're tied up. There's really not a whole lot of difference there. A couple no. of OBs, you know, strokes gained on the putting maybe. And Garrett's putting better than Simon. That How about that? That's a rare occurrence. 
Well, pretty equal though, and all things are considered, oh, yeah. you know, a mm -hmm. couple of strokes putting and a couple of strokes from an OB, and there you go, tied. Macbeth approaching on eight. Looks pretty wide. He's talking to it, and he doesn't like that, and it turns out pretty nice. There's been times I would give him that one. Yeah, his putting, I'm sure he'd like to not have to putt at all after the last few holes. Things have dried up for Macbeth in a bad way here. Sitting even on the day? Even par. Got an opportunity to get birdie, but man, yeah. last few holes, the putters really let him down. Freeman sitting in a tie for third with Robinson. It's approaching on nine. That's a birdie look. Inside circle one for Freeman. Robinson approaching after the drive went OB. He will drop in par from there. That's a nice recovery. It is. Didn't put him completely out of position, that drop. A little bit longer of an approach. We're at 14 with Sexton as Corey Ellis watches. Nate Sexton on the official heater. Trying to get things to double digits here. Nice shot. We'll check back in once it gets to the green. Garrett's approach on eight. Another one. Some child's play. No doubt. A little chip shot for these guys from that range. And Simon just inside 80. For Eagle, Simon. Oh, oh, just another one that drives up short and left. One of the better ones, though, lately. Opportunity. I'm sure he'd really like to touch some metal on one of these putts. He's had, seems like, seven or eight of these long eagle looks or something all week. And yeah. every time he kind of finds himself in this longer birdie range, there's just not enough pace on him. And his putting style, if he gets a bit more aggressive, it's only going to leave him three paces off the basket. They're all dying right there. Macbeth, birdie look inside circle. There it is. There he Beth is. snaps the birdie in. Gets him back under par on the round, but starting to feel like it's going to be too little too late for Macbeth at this point. Simon puts it in and gets to 30. He and Garrett Gerthy will be seven clear of Paul. And they'll have five on that guy who dropped in par, Mr. Robinson. Garrett regains his share of the lead. We swing over to Gannon Burr. Attacking the green on nine over the rhododendrons. Inside circle one, just below the basket. Oh, well done there from that? Gannon Burr. He is really shaping these shots beautifully today. He is. We're going to take a quick break on the Disc Golf Network while they make their way to nine. Back to Glendivere in just a few moments. designed for me to be able to throw hard, throw consistent shots, and know that it's not going to just glide and sail past the basket. I just think it's a, such a unique uh, flight and a unique distance and it's a unique spot in the bag, and that's why uh, I think it's becoming so popular. Back to the action in Portland and the action heating up, but not for that guy. Unfortunately, it is not going to be Paul Macbeth's weekend this time. Did put himself in position, but unable to capitalize on the moment today. Currently seven strokes off the pace. This man setting the pace today. Double G on the tee of nine. You like it? It's in position. 
It's pretty much the shot that they're wanting you to throw here on hole nine. It's a position shot. That second shot up the hill towards the targets where things get a little tricky. Simon. Nice looking swing from Simon as well. He's heading towards the same area as double G. Mm -hmm. Low ceiling. Kind of goes back up the hill a little bit after you make it through the tunnel. So hard to really get extra distance on this drive. Paul. It's fine. And now Robinson. Isaac, five back and a tie with Joel for third. Out of play. A little bit shorter of the other fellows on the card, but on the fairway, and they'll take a walk. Try to finish out this front nine. Everybody playing clean. No bogey so far. Minus Macbeth, rather. One right. bogey back on six. Sexton on 14, throwing three. Well short of the pin. Oh, you did it. That was horrible. Oh, no. That just put... Nate Sexton in jeopardy of picking up a late round bogey after playing real nice. Birdie look for Freeman is off the cage. Mm. Kind of short arm that one. I don't know if you saw that. It yeah. Looked like he kind of pulled the string back on that. Joel Freeman's going to come up short. Opportunity for him to get it to five under through nine. Unfortunately, will not be. Hope you guys are enjoying these awesome aerial views and this live coverage on the DGN, the Portland Open. It's been a fun weekend of disc golf, Ian. Yeah, two great courses. Lots of good shots, lots of fun highlight moments, fun throw-ins from the fairways, big putts from all over the place, great roller play, a little bit of everything. Absolutely. Isaac Robinson, second on nine. Uphill shot, 328 to the pin. Going for the flex, challenging all the trees right down the middle. <laughs> Looks like he snuck it inside. Mm -hmm. Calling that circle two for Isaac Robinson. And just a couple feet closer is Macbeth. They're all kind of in that 320 foot range into the pin but pretty uphill shot. And very guarded, very protected. So yeah, you're definitely gonna feel a loss of speed throwing up the hill. You gotta throw it a bit harder than the 320 suggests and picking the right disc that's gonna have enough fade to finish too, especially if you're casting it out to the right side. We did see Isaac try to play it straight up the middle and try to mitigate that. We'll see how Macbeth tries to attack here. Angle Heiser out of Macbeth. That's tracking. Fantastic shot from Paul. On to the green, just a little below and to the left of target for Macbeth. Quality shot. Next act is Lazat back down the fairway. Simon also opting to go straight up the middle. Look at that shot, Ian. Bullseye. Bounce it off the assembly. Why don't you, Simon Lazat? That's one way to get things rolling again. Back-to-back yeah. -back birdies coming up for Mr. Simon. Girthy. Ah, pressure back on Double G to get a shot yeah. onto the green and make something happen here. Keep pace. Looks like it's turning a little too fast for me, Ian. I agreed. Yeah, that's going to be outside circle one, I believe, just by a step. Going to have that last tree to straddle around. And 
14 and Sexton to say par. Keep the clean score card. That's a lengthy putt. He's deep in circle two. And that's 180 for the best dart thrower in the Didn't world. Didn't he do that on his birthday a couple of years ago to set a course record? Almost the same reaction, right? Just <laughs> shoots his hands into the sky. He knew it as soon as he left his hand. That was money. What a par save there from Nate Sexton. It was sweet, Nate. Been the team captain for a couple of years. Gotta love those sexy firebirds. Mm -hmm. He'll be roasting the chumps on Thursday at Milo. Nice. I'm jelly. <laughs> love that place. Me too. Sad I won't be there with you guys. Be there in spirit, though. It's like the Sistine Chapel, but disc golf version, you know? No doubt. 15 with Sexton. Flex forehand is the best play, and there's not a ton better at that shot than this guy. High flexor coming up from Sexton, I imagine. There it is. Sounds like the group liked it. Yep, master of commentary doing our job for us. Robinson. What oh, a bid. Man. Face mask high off the band. Ooh, that was edge Great circle bid, too as well. I know, man. What a courageous run from distance, unable to connect. Double G now. This guy is just inside the circle one whisker. Is that his foot on a whisker? That is his foot right there. He's been doing very good from this range all weekend long. Big, big putt here to stay knotted up with Simon Lazat. <laughs> Clutch putting from Double G. It looks so casual, too. Just a flick of the wrist. Found some confidence with it. He's believing. He knows that he's got a chance to take this tournament down. Six down through nine holes. Double G setting the pace here on the lead card. Wow. Macbeth to match that bird. Just does creep it over the rim. Macbeth trying to dig out of the lull from the start of his round. Robinson to drop in par and Simon, don't hit your head on that birdie. Back to a tie at the top. Let's roll back a look at that Garrett putt. Balance on point. Wow. Hand to basket. Yeah. Count it. And this tournament it, coverage is sponsored by Fortnite. A new season starts this week. Check out the link in the YouTube description. Tyler Classical Academy has been incredible. These kids are super excited for disc golf. I didn't learn about disc golf until I was in my mid-20s, but I'm so happy that these kids do and they're getting the chance to try it out. This is a fantastic program and a fantastic opportunity for our school to have professionals come in and take over the PE program for a day and expose these kids to the joys that they can have in just watching a disc fly through the air. The youth is really going to come in in a strong wave to the sport of disc golf. Welcome back to Glendevere, 14 in Coriolis. That's a birdie look for Corey that nestles in. Five in a oh. row for Coriolis. Had a super rough start. Bogey's on one and four since then. Lots of birdies. Nice. He is in a tie for 21st currently. I'm sure he'd like to see his name a bit higher. Such a talented thrower of the disc, but it can't always be your weekend. That's just the nature of the game. Joel Freeman on 10, second shot from the fairway to this mounded green, very protected by that. Mm. Golf green. Hamas. Adam forehanding his zone. 
missing safe. He certainly did. Looks like he's circle one and circle two, rather, off to the right side of the basket. Back over to 15 for Sexton's birdie putt. Nice job there from Nate Sexton to control the body. Core strength so important on those straddle putts, relying on that midsection to do all the work. 10 down through 15 holes for Sexton. Hot, hot, hot. Up into your top 10 in a tie for eighth with Cole Radalvin. It's a nice move there from Sexton just inside the top 20 when the day started. Nice move here on the final round. Our final grouping waiting for the fairway to clear of 10 before we see some tee shots. Minus Macbeth's kind of sloppy start there. Pretty solid shooting from the lead card to the front nine. Got nine holes to decide this championship here in Portland. Inward nine does offer some challenges here on the way home. How about that finish too, Philo? Yeah, hole 15 has definitely got some, you know, some, some teeth to it. You gotta clear that water, get skinny up there. Hole 10's no joke either. You got to put a good one into the fairway so you can really go after this green up on that mogul on the backside. It's looking like it's, you know, playing pretty fair to the field, but you still yeah. got to throw good shots. Yeah. Got a lot that. of, you know, space to go be other than that ball golf green, or if you get a little too aggressive, maybe some OB deep cart path back there. But overall, it's a really nice looking hole. And hole 10 is our Eric hole. Early recognition is critical in the fight against cancer and they are our official cancer prevention charity of this golf pro tour all year long double g t of 10. nice smooth swing there from double g that's going to be safely into the fairway drags it off to the left just a little bit but that might open up some airspace philo it should he can go mid-range into the green from that range yeah. simon lazat keeping that a bit straighter a little longer does make the mandatory, and that's in prime position. Well up the fairway. Right in the middle, too. Macbeth. Also going to a little bit of a hyzer stand up and glide. Somewhere in between G and Simon, it looks like. Yes, sir. Fairway safe. Robinson. Branch there knocks him down, but shouldn't affect it too much for Isaac. Yeah, he got he's, enough done. He's got plenty of arm speed to make the final carry, just 710 feet on this par four. Ahead on the green, Radolin. Strong putt. That's a good make. Burr. Got his chalk bag out. Nope, I'm gonna <laughs> grab some grass. A little bit of a breeze from his right shoulder. Might pick up the speed on the disc and make it lift a little bit, so you gotta keep that in mind, putting up the hill, you know, expose the flight plate. Something to anticipate even from short range. Somehow that's a par for Gannon. Not sure what happened off the tee. Did you? Do you remember I'm anything? I'm not sure what happened. Yeah. Hamas. Adam slides that one home nicely. That was a par for Adam as well. Freeman. Bogey make for Freeman on 10. That's a cooler. That is Joel Freeman heading the wrong direction after a really nice front nine. Sexton. Forehand roller on 16. Neither do we, my friend. I saw none of that. Yeah. So. Sexton Firebird forehand roller. It's like it was going to get blown left, is what he was, I think, hinting at. I missed it. Yeah. It disappeared pretty quickly. Back to the fairway of 10 for Robinson's approach. 340 in. 
Wow, he took a big chunk of that tree off. Hopefully it doesn't kill the speed to land on that green. Should be a green flag there. Was it his hand or the disc? The, the disc, the I disc? believe, okay. yeah. I think he chopped it right as it left his hand. Maybe Gio will hook us up with a replay on that as Isaac is carrying around his new bouquet. <laughs> Yep, there you go. Yeah, he's stuck it. it in his bag. <laughs> Souvenir <laughs> for later. Good luck charm. Girthy. Wow, Double G's got the straight straight shot if he wants it, but he's looking out towards the Heiser side. Play a little bump and run if he chooses the right disc. Oh yes. Come on, Bart. Oh. And there he goes. <laughs> Sit down. Nicely done from Double G using the ground play. Smart one there. Mm -hmm. Didn't he lawn dart that one onto the green yesterday? Was this the hole he did it? I don't recall that yeah, shot. Looked like a good correction if that's the case. Putting the pressure on Simon. Yes, he did. You are right. Macbeth. <laughs> Throwing two. Beautiful shot from Macbeth. No stress there to earn his birdie. Well, hat trick here mid-round. Mm -hmm. But what could have been for Paul except for the putting? He could be all up in these guys' yeah. armpits smelling the deodorant if he was a little sharper <laughs> to start. Unfortunately, going par through seven holes just ain't going to get it done when you're trailing by five or six coming in. Mm -hmm. Simon, the straight shot earned him a closer look at 280. What do you think he's thinking here, Philo? Hopefully he's just going to play a little hyzer, something over stable. There's a lot of green grass to the right side of the basket. I'm not sure if this tree that's in front of him is kind of taking the angle and the airspace away that he'd prefer to throw the disc on, so he's might be in a spot he hadn't anticipated now having to kind of shape something new for the first time. And there it is going for the double G, kind of bounce it in there. Able to execute well. Nicely done by Lazat. Dueling birdie putts coming up for your leaders. Oh, we got that Robinson shot again. Wow. Yep, as soon as that thing <laughs> left his hand, just. Well, the finish didn't got, look too bad. I mean, it's like a decent distance. Yeah, it looks like he's pin high. Chopping Brock a lie. Amazing. Course maintenance brought to you by Isaac Robinson. <laughs> Isaac hanging out with his prodigy buddy Alden Harris, your Goat Hill winner. Corey Ellis on 16. Corey. Big putt from Corey Ellis doing West Virginia proud. That's where that man's from, isn't it? Yes, sir. West Virginia's Just finest. Stringing him up. Oh, well, we do got the James Conrad, didn't he, from. He's not West Virginia. The uh, other, oh. I think he's from regular Virginia. Oh, Robinson off the chains for birdie bid. You're right. He's just from straight up Blacksburg, Virginia. Same neighborhood. Yeah, right there. Maintain his share of the lead, most likely. Simon for birdie. Watches that one all the way into the basket. Simon Lazat. Able to connect on the tester putt up the hill. And now Double G has this left for his share. Yeah, the wind's kind of blowing a little bit in his face. We saw where uh, Gannon Burr was putting from on the other side of the hill. A little bit of a tailwind, so now wind, I believe, blowing back in Double G's face just a hair. The chains are just swaying. <laughs> Double G cuts through the air with ease, snaps that birdie into the basket. 
And we are knotted up again at 32 this time. Macbeth to match that birdie. Does so nicely. He gets to 25. He's got to share a third place with Isaac Robinson. Who will drop in. Par. Isaac makes good on that. We have a replay of the Simon Lazat putt. You called it, Philo. Watching it the whole way in. Well, we got eight holes left to go to decide this tournament. Who will it be? It's a two-man race. Simon Lazat, Garrett Gerthy. We're going to watch it the whole way in on the Disc Golf Network. Back in just a few. Check out the whole lineup at ClashDisc.com. I mean, it's literally the most popular disc of all time in the history of the sport. At its core, it's one of the most important tools a player has in their bag, a dependable, straight-flying mid-range. But the legacy of the buzz goes a lot deeper than just that. DGA Hurricane. GDA Hurricane. A hurricane. Andy Kane. Hurricane. Rectal vein. No, look. A hurricane. Acid rain. Hurricane. Quiche Lorraine. No, quiche. that's a breakfast dish. I'm a what? Hurricane. Oh, oh, Charlemagne. No, it's the DGA Hurricane. Oh, have you been saying hurricane this whole time? Yes. Why are you yelling? Gary Gerthy. T of 11, your co-leader. Oh. So small advantage, Simon. All of a sudden, Philo, they are seven clear of the field. Two-man race, yep. eight holes to go. Simon pushing that way down the fairway on 11. Advantage Opportunity, German. yeah. This is a hole that Simon could potentially make eagle on if he throws a dime on this second shot. So much land out there to work with on 11. Mm -hmm. Macbeth. Currently tied with Robinson for third. That's a smart golf shot right there for Macbeth. Mm -hmm. And now Robinson. Oh, overturned that one. Isaac Robinson right into a tree, well back off the tee. Advantage Macbeth in that battle. Yes, it is. Two different battles happening here. Ahead to Sexton. Putting on 16. Ah. That was for birdie. Nate would like go on to drop in par. Burr. And 
that will earn Ganon a birdie look from circle two on hole 11. Oh, let's fly this. This this has got some, some it's got texture. some texture to it. I love that word. There's, yeah. just, there's nothing you know easy or given about this yeah. shot. You really got to clear some of these trees off the tee. There's the second mando around 500 feet. Definitely got to keep the disc on the left side of that. There is some OB off to the left side. You can see there on the on the whole map. It shouldn't really come into play if you're throwing a straight shot. Then from there, that's when you can really start to open things up. There's not a whole lot of danger to worry about. There is, I think, a bunker way up high and right off to the basket, but really it should be out of play. Options to go even roller into the green and try to make up some extra ground does kind of play down into the bowl back up the hill at the end, so shouldn't hurt you too bad. Robinson with a very early tree throwing two on the par five. Definitely want to get full flight out of a second shot after hitting early. Seems like he's done just that, even cresting the hill down towards the down slope. Oh, he can get in from there, can't yes, he? Yes, he can. Back in position. Wow, well done. Up ahead on, from the same fairway, Joel Freeman. Yeah, he bounced in a little early there. Looks to be right around circle's edge, putting up the hill. Your scoreboard at two-horse race. Pretty good battle for third, though, between a lot of people. One of your thoroughbreds, Garrett Gerthy. Are you surprised to see these two long arms duking it out here, coming down the stretch? I'm a little surprised about Garrett. <laughs> I, I, I haven't seen him putt like this in a while. It's awesome to watch. It's great to see the putting yeah. game. It's all confidence, you know. It is. Double G's got plenty of game in the bag. Mm -hmm. It's all about confidence and putting the pieces together, and it's so easy for one thing to be off and to derail you from good performances overall on a weekend. G ripping on the Emperor. Oh, he's got so much airspace over there to work this disc, and that's so high in the air, just missing everything. Making the catch cam turn in a major wow. way. Wow, oh. he's encroaching on the next group. <laughs> Double G is going to have an eagle throw-in opportunity after that shot. What an air shot from Double G. Rolling back a Zuka replay of this massive pump. One of the biggest arms in the world right here. He got everything he could out of that Every shot, Ian. Single inch. He man. threw the disc in the perfect uh, look spot at him as well. it again. <laughs> yeah, G. Give him the people what they want. Yeah, he, that's what he does, doesn't he? Two showmen of the sport yeah, putting you, on a show, dropping big bombs out here. Have you seen those drone shots of they're chasing mm -hmm. G's disc over the water? It went I love it. Oh yeah. my God! Did you see that one that cleared the road? Yes, that was fun, too. It was like a leopard or something, too. Man throws him hard. Unreal. Give that dude good conditions. He might be keeping up with Wiggins for a world record. Sure. Sexton on 17 into the green. Some late trees, and there he is catching one yeah. as it starts to hyzer in. There's a lot to miss on that one. There is. And it's a tough second shot. As Sexton said, those trees are playing defense. Mm -hmm. Bunch of Matumbos out there. <laughs> Long arm of the law. Is that yours, Simon? That is yours? This so looks like they are waiting for the green to clear. Dolan. This is Cole getting thrown on by Garrett Gerthy. <laughs> is he going to pop in frame? <laughs> and let's check out the throw. This is an eagle look. Can he big putt him? Ooh. Mm. Up there. Gave it a shot. <laughs> Tap in birdie for Cole coming. Mm -hmm. Back to the fairway for Paul's second. Well, they're going to hang out and wait a while. They Let are. These guys clear out of there. Hammis. That's an in. Birdie, right? It was, yeah. That's 
tie for seventh for Adam. Dolan drops in his birdie, and Cole is in a tie for fifth. Yeah, you are right, Ian. There's mm -hmm. six or seven guys all bunched up trying to get onto that podium spot. Paul Macbeth, Isaac Gannon, Adam Havis, Cole, Joel Freeman. After that, they yeah. got a little breathing room between the next clump with Nate Sexton still charging away. Obviously going to be making that par, it looks like, on 17. Correct. Gossage. Albert Tom, Calvin Heimberg, all trying to get it into the house. A lot of blue numbers for those guys. Albert Tom just collected Eagle on 11 moments ago. Oh, dang. So, yeah, these guys are trying to get into those top 10 spots, to pick up those points, earn a little more cash. Wow, that was a five-foot drop in Eagle. That's incredible. Whoa. The bazooka showing it off, huh? <laughs> I wonder if we got one off that. It was bazooka worthy if you did it. All right, Macbeth is ready. Second on 11. Should be a force coming from Paul. Big, big fairway off to the right side. Big flex shot coming? That's what I see. That's where all the air is. Trying to hyzer flip this thing to keep it moving straight. And there it is. Going to be 100 feet away or so for Macbeth. Wide open approach up the gut. Simon, we have range for Simon's shot. 620 feet. So reachable. Yeah, he could potentially just go one angle hyzer with the way that he <laughs> likes to throw the disc. I mean, it's downhill, so it's gonna, gravity's gonna help it some. Just gotta wing it out there wide of those trees and hope for that finish at the end to be on point. Simon goes straight at it, trying to get gravity to help him out and squares up a tree. He's going to be well short, but up and down for birdie shouldn't be too stressful from that range. I'm sure he would have liked to have seen that one get a full flight and yeah. be in contention for some kind of an eagle putt. Not meant to be. 17 with sex. It looks like a dart approach for Nate. Slow drift to the left with the forehand. Look he at is, that. Oh, oh, catches another tree. Last one before target. Does it say if he's in circle one or two yet? Uh, circle one. All right. Nate Sexton trying to push away the bogeys. Made one huge par putt just a few holes ago. Yeah. That looks like he's going to have another tester to fight off a bogey there on 17. Robinson, 569 left. So going the straight gap is that gravity takes over, pulls him down to the bottom of the bowl. And Isaac's going to have an opportunity for a long four after hitting almost the first tree available. Yes, sir. Adam on 12. 370 foot par three. Cuts through all the trees, does Adam Hammes, bounces inside circle one and probably just off the bullseye. Corey Ellis for seven straight birdies on 17. This is a lengthy bid, but he's great from out here at range. Oh, how did that not go in? Just short, was it? It just ran out of air. As it approaches the basket, it was lined up. Burr on 12. Big cut shot from Burr trying to beat the canopy. Certainly does. Onto the green, bounces off the root of the tree, and Gannon Burr in business for a birdie. Back to 11 for Simon's third. Important up and down here for Simon Lazat. Don't want to walk away from this hole with a par. That's looking beautiful, well executed, perfect touch. Slides right up to the target. Nice recovery there from Simon Lazat. Exactly. Ezra Aderhold for birdie on 17. Ezra's sitting at 12th place, eight under for his round, one bogey, and he's going to bang another one in there on 17. Good shooting, Ezra. Back to the fairway of 11 for Garrett's third. 
Is that that puddle top AX3? See that out of the Sonic. It doesn't look like a Sonic. Okay, we'll, we'll go ABR. Oh, yeah, it is. You're right. Opportunity here for Double G to throw in for Eagle. Makes the right decision, pitches it under the basket. Drop in birdies coming for your leaders. Yep. They are dueling. Yes, they are. Mano a mano. It's a chess match now. It's basically match play. Yeah. Whoever misses next. It's a warm up for Colorado. Yeah, probably going <laughs> to lose this tournament if you make another par or two. Sexton with another good par save after the dart approach. Beautifully yes, done. Yes, he did. Nicely done there by Nate Sexton. Eagle look for McBeast. That's way off to the left. Macbeth going to have a lengthy putt for birdie. Coming back somewhere in the seven or eight paces range. Oh, I just mentioned this, the match play championship. We are headed to Colorado in just a couple weeks' time for that up at elevation. That's going to be interesting. 8,500 feet or so. It's somewhere, Ooh. yeah, it's somewhere between 7,500 and 8,000 feet, depending on where you are on the course. That's that's high up there on the hill, man. Make sure you get up there to acclimate early. It's up in Bailey, Colorado. It's a beautiful course in the hills, the, kind of the foothills outside Denver. Excellent. Robinson from distance gets a birdie despite the drive. Par fives, you always tell us. You always tell us, Philo. Par fives, you can make a mistake and still score. Isaac Robinson proves my point for me. Thank you very much, sir. Well done. Totally redeemed himself. Big time circle two putt there from Isaac. It's kind of been a similar story for Isaac these last three rounds. Got off to that blazing, scorching round, 12 deep on the first one, but unable to regain and capture that fire. There's a good make from Paul. Matches the birdie from Robinson. They will stay tied, I believe. Yes, they are tied for third. 26 under a piece. One clear bird, Hammis, for the time being. Double G drops in birdie. Your leader, and now your co-leader. They are on the way to 12. We take a quick break on the Disc Golf Network. That's the future of Disc Golf right there. I mean, that kid is going to be... Uh, force you're reckoning with now, next year and 10 years. Just look forward to many more battles with him. To win this event is a great stepping stone in my career, and hopefully I can win a couple more soon. Sex and T of 18 if you bring it home we'll set a course record trying to get it over the lake off to the left side green flag claps from the gallery that's a good start yes it is those first two shots are pretty dice dicey on 18. I think the first one is the most important shot. Really, the yeah, the first two mm -hmm. shots, you got to get around that first mandatory and push that fairway some 200 feet to really have a comfortable third. Yeah. Get up and down for birdie. You know? But yeah, if you had to pick one, it's definitely the first because it sets yeah. you up for that you gotta, second. You want to get set up nicely for that second shot to be comfortable. You don't want it to be like Simon was where he's pinched off, hits that tree, goes OB way off to the left. You don't want that. You yeah. want to set yourself up to play the more open space on the hole. Those were your 10-10 discs, hot rounds of the day, thanks to them. Nice, healthy gallery out nice. here in Portland, taking in all the views. Looking like a, a golf tournament, man. Certainly is. And if you want to join that massive gallery, you can head over to the website and grab some tickets. Make sure you do before the tour comes to your town. They sell out. And I see people begging for tickets every weekend, man. Yeah, they're going to be scalpers now for disc golf uh -huh. tickets because there's so many fans who want to come and hang out and only so many tickets available. So do hop on it now. The Disc Golf Pro Tour schedules up on the website. 
We're in the hot summer months coming up. Some of the best events, some of the best courses. All kinds of fun stuff coming up. Preserve, DDO, Idlewild, Ledgestone. Lots of places with lots of places, uh, you know, lots of room for spectators. So yeah. get in there now. Did you say Deglo? Deglo, yep. Yeah, That's like another that. one. I love that one. Yeah. And it's it's just different in person, I promise you. Toboggan's awesome. Yeah, isn't it? It's going to be the, uh, the Champions Cup course oh. next year. Oh. Yeah. I'll get to watch that. Nate Sexton second on 18. I miss good old Hudson Mills sometimes. You ever been to that track? I have never been there. Uh-uh. Oof. It's a hike, isn't it? <laughs> it is a beast. Double G on 12 going roller with the Roadrunner. Brian, what happened to that, that runner? Did he run into a tree? Looks like we might have lost Earhart right now. We'll get him back in a bit. Simon with the DD3 roller. Mm, this could curl up real nice for Simon. Oh there you go. Simon Lazat drops a dime with the roller. And Simon will earn himself a stroke advantage. Grab himself a sip of water, calm those nerves. He hit the ceiling on that one yesterday. Good correction. Macbeth. Going for the air shot. Little baby flexor. I think he caught some of the oh, canopy, did. and that's going to slow him down in a hurry. Long look for Macbeth coming up. And the margin for error on that air shot is so tiny. You have just such little airspace to work with. Yeah, you got to throw it hard, too. Mm hmm. Robinson. That looks a bit high out of Isaac's hands, hoping that it finds a window and that catches a limb and redirects. Not in the worst way ever it looked like, though. Probably in the neighborhood of Macbeth. Yeah. They are making their way down the fairway. And that's going to be your new leader after the hole concludes, most likely. Let's take another replay of this Simon Lazar roller from the catch cam. Oh, this would be a cool angle. That looked perfect right out the gate from Simon. Yeah. Beautiful anticipation. Brings it in right around the corner of that tree. Couldn't have done it any tighter. Look at that roller technique. Really See. letting those shoulders fall back and around, creating the arc. That's the trick to getting those quick rollers down. It's big lean back. Big fist pump. He knows how important it is if he's going to take it down. It is totally a match play scenario here with he and Garrett. No mistakes on the way into the clubhouse if you want to take this one down. Speaking of Garrett, he is looking at his second. A rare sighting for a oh, double G sidearm. Because of the Mando. Yep, he's got to make the mandatory. Touchy shot here for double G. Comes in on the back side of circle one for double G, so open putt. Mm -hmm. Tester range, but. It is tester range, yeah. We'll see how it. Especially under these circumstances. The, the pressure's going up no every doubt. hole, man. It's not going to come down from here. Mm -hmm. Every shot, it's going to ratchet up just a little bit more. Especially if Simon keeps, you know, throwing good shots. And. Ah, this is such a. Fun place to be when you're in a tournament, man. You know, yeah. it's both of these guys, you know, they're going to be grateful for the experience either way. I'm sure they both want to win just as bad, but someone's going to have to lose today. We'll just see how it unravels. Sure. Macbeth and Robinson both right around 70 feet for their birdie bids. There's some magic for Paul Macbeth. Huge make. Able to sling one in from way downtown. And unless Robinson can match, that will give him solo third for the time. Macbeth still hunting down a podium finish, although this event has long slipped through his fingers. No quit in this man's game. Absolutely not. And now Robinson. What a match this would be. 
Can the recent college grad do it? Yes, he can. Oh, way. Not so fast, Mr. McBeast, says Isaac Robinson. <laughs> I may have just come out of college, but I'm a gamer. Man. It's going to be fun to watch this guy play some more disc golf tournaments, huh? I haven't seen dueling 70-footers like that in a while. It's been a minute. We saw some dueling 50-footers over at Blue Lake, but <laughs> yeah. that was from another few steps back. And a little bit of highlight reel for the fellas for later on. These guys are incredible. Big pressure putt coming up for a G. Yeah, this is totally in tester range, just outside the warm-up range. Call it seven paces. To drop just one stroke to Simon, who is parked for birdie. Keep the same rhythm, same timing, same belief. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely love to see that for double G. He's only going to cough up one. Seeing a lot of players cough up two in that situation. You can see uh, knowing your guy's going to birdie on you makes that par putt. Can make the knees a little wobbly, make the arm get a little quick sometimes, make the you know the brain start racing a little bit, but double G holds strong, only drops one stroke. Heading over to hole 13, 455 foot par three coming up. Replay of the 70 footer from Paul McBeth. Paul McBeth now stringing along five birdies. And this guy matched that putt from the beast to regain his share at third place. Isaac Robinson from way downtown. Bang! Buckets. They both went and ran that one in. <laughs> what a cool moment. I mean, you know those fans won't, won't forget that for a long time. That's what it's all about for them, making memories. Take your kids out there and make some core memories. They'll remember them for the rest of their life, I promise you. No doubt Simon Lazat has gotten it to one of my favorite numbers. 34, old basketball number from high school. Was it? Yep. <laughs> Got to wear it all four years. What position do you play? All of them. All right. Sexton on 18. Throwing three. Looking pretty good. Does have enough height to scoot up? Ah, oh, gets gobbled up a bit early for Sexton. Did it? Okay. Yeah, he had a really nice line on it, but it just kind of dropped as it made its way up the fairway. One little wind bounce and dropped the bottom out of it, and he's going to have a long bid to try to get this course record. Do they have him marked as on the fairway after three throws? Yeah, probably in that 80, 90-foot range. Well, he's got the course record right now. Oh, he's at 10. Yeah, he's at 10. Oh, all right, yeah, there yeah, we yeah. go. So to extend on the course record. Yeah. So he'll... he'll most likely bring that 10 home, right? Oh, absolutely. I don't see him making any mistakes on 18. Grass is Sexton. No doubt. What a Sunday performance. Rodolin. Yeah, dude. Birdie make for Cole on 13. That's a really nice birdie up on 13. Yeah, that's Lengthy a par 3. 4, 5, 5. Yeah, that's a big number for a par 3. And I believe it's even uphill a little, a little bit. Simon grabs a PD2 and heads to the tee on 13. They switched Nate Sexton to putting from circle two, so oh, okay. opportunity maybe to slide one in there to get it to 11. Nice. For now, it's Simon Lazat regain the lead, one stroke advantage. Asking for it to miss all the trees and get a skip. And here comes Simon Lazat inside circle one. Out drives the hole just a little bit past pin high, but that's a real nice looking look for Simon. Let's see how G can bounce back. Yeah, he's going to get to watch a couple more throws because Paul McBeth and Isaac Robinson are teeing off in front of him. A couple more seconds for Double G to think about it. McBeast. Looks like a similar line to what we just saw from Simon. Here comes the fade. Misses all the trees, and he's inside circle one. All right, pressure on Isaac to match. And those two are starting to get a little breathing room. They are too clear of the field 
Also starting to see some umbrellas pop up in the gallery. Oh, uh, yeah. It's been pretty nice the majority of this round, and seems like some moisture is starting to fall from the skies once again. Robinson and Macbeth dueling birdie putts again. Yeah, I think uh, advantage of Macbeth on this hole. I agree, sir. Big, big shot here for Double G. Doesn't want to cough up two back-to-back -back after he earned them. Double G's going to catch one of the Guardians. Does not make it on to the level of the green. Mm, again, advantage German. Let's check out this Simon Lazat form. Well, we saw the type of shot that he wants to throw going for the high cut swing. Let's see how he puts this together. Oh, he kind of hyzer flipped that from that swing. So yeah. there you go. Not really coming over the top of it until maybe right at the very, very end. Coming out hyzer, 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 then snapping that wrist over. Never going to say anything bad about a Simon Lazat's form. I mean, look, the, the, main, the, thing, excuse me, the most important thing is how he gets back to level. Let's look how he's got his shoulders kind of tucked, and then right when he starts to, and then right there, boom, uh -huh. everything levels off. That's the key right there to those crispy penetrating shots is not allowing your arm to swing up the grade everything's leveling off and that's like a last second adjustment that a lot of players struggle to feel like no wasted motion not just no wasted motions but in sh body shaping you know what i mean your body is creating the shape on the disc and simon lazat's a true artist and a huge thanks to idio footwear for sponsoring the forum breakdown disc golf shoes made for disc golfers by disc golfers got that toe cap if you're a Toe dragger. dragger. Yep. Don't be a toe dragger. <laughs> <laughs> Sexton on circle two's whisker for a birdie finish and 11 down. And a new course record oh. by two strokes. Just misses, takes a stab. Ten it is most likely for Mr. Sexton. Garrett Gerthy from 80. This would be huge for oh. double G. Oh. Uh, buzzes the tower. Valiant effort, but going to be enough with Simon Lazat inside circle one. Typically doesn't miss many of those. He did earlier in his round. He did. Had a couple of circle one bids. Bounce heavy off chains. So Robinson from 41. To your point, Paul at 26. There you go. Big putt here for Isaac. Ah, forgot the air space. Great line, good pace, no air. Par coming for Isaac. Like Simon Lazat bounced a couple feet further than Macbeth, a little deep. Yeah, I think he's right on circle's edge or just outside. That looks like he's just outside. Yeah, the circle two mark from U-Disc. Opportunity for some more breathing room here for Simon. For a two-stroke advantage. Just good enough, Ian. I tried not to. Nub chain nubs and back in again for Simon Lazat. And that's a two stroke lead. Got five holes to play. Sigh of relief there from Simon. Macbeth for solo third. All day long. There he is. Not the performance Macbeth was looking for on the front nine, or at least the first seven holes playing yeah. at even par, but since then, nothing but blue for Paul Macbeth. Five straight. Wow. Call that six, isn't it? Oh, you're right. They haven't updated yet, have they? Girthy to save par and again only drop one stroke to Simon. Double turkey for Macbeth. And... Double turkey for Lazat. Garrett puts that one home for par. He will find himself two back as they head to 14. Robinson saves par. Simon has a two-stroke lead. Here's how he got that second one. I bet his reaction's pretty good to this. He knew he got away with one there. <laughs> that, that's a 50-50 right there. Those yeah. can easily jump right back out on your face. And Simon Lazat able to creep it on in there give himself a little more breathing room trying to get it to the house sitting at eight under at his round i mean if he makes a couple more birdies he might 
finish up making his own course record. You make good points, sir. Simon, yeah. back where he started the day with a two-stroke lead. Sexton for the course record, 10 down and a par on 18. No, Nate Sexton triple putts to the last hole. <laughs> He's got a share of the course record. Don't really see that happening from a guy like Nate no, Sexton, right? We were no. both thinking, ah, you know, 60, 70 feet, two putts. Yeah. Ah, uh, bummer. Still the course record, but he's got to share it. Well, good showing and there still from Nate hot Sexton. Round of the yeah, day. man, hot round for the day. Nothing to hold your head about. You know, hold it down and drag your feet too long. Kevin Jones, Austin Hannum, Chris Clemens, Zachariah Johnson. Bunch of guys moving up today. Oh, I'm happy for Zach Johnson. That guy's a grinder and working real hard. Such a talented thrower of the disc. Always a smile on his face. Positive attitude out there on the course. He is up 18 spots today into the That's top 25. That's a big move there for Zach Johnson. Austin Hannum doing some work as well. Yes, he did. He got off to a really nice start today. Able to bounce it up some number to... Oh, the same, actually. Up 18 spots there into, you go. into 25th. There That's you go. How funny. Good work. Joel Freeman. He found the OB off his drive, so throwing three on 14, coming in shy. Yeah, that's going to get Boat. beat down a little bit early. Radalin. Did he throw it 600 feet again today? Uh, it looks like a little, a little shorter. shorter. Yeah, I don't yeah. think he quite got all of it like he did the other day, but still in position. Hang this thing out on the right side and like that came up a hair short for Cole. Gonna have a lengthy putt. Yeah, somewhere out in circle two. Let's see if you just guys have marked it. Yep. Putting for birdie from circle two. I think I saw Ty Love over there. The answer was on our round one feature card. Well, things don't work out for Double G today. Nothing to hold his head down about. He's put on one heck of a performance this weekend. Got second place all locked up, unless if something just, you know, crazy happens to him here in the closing holes. But yeah, I don't think he really did anything to lose this tournament. You know, just Simon just kind of got on fire and matched him a couple of holes at the right time to regain a lead. Yeah, geez, eight down through 12. He's playing clean, great. Clean eight down. Yeah, he's playing great. You know, That's he's got to take good. that as a, as a positive leaving here this weekend if he doesn't, you know, come back and regain and overtake Simon one more time to win. A lot of positives to take away. You know, the putting game looking really good. Yes. Driving, making the right decisions, recovering from drives that don't work out his way. You know, I mean, a bunch of times he gave himself birdie looks from shots we thought were way out of position. That arm is a great equalizer. Lazat on the tee of 14. Big high Anheuser wants this thing to get boogie into the right. Pan out. There is an OB line over there. That's he OB. Has found it. Too much go for Simon Lazat. That thing drags all the way to the right side. He can't believe it. Just opened the door for Double G again there to gain go. a stroke. That's no easy up and down from there for Simon Lazat. No, no, it's a big shot. Got a lot of trees to finish the hole. And Paul McBeth now after a lot of good holes in a row. Taking the inside line. That is in danger of going out of bounds as well. Yeah. Out of bounds. That's going to go a ways back as well. Big mistake there from McBeth getting aggressive on the inside line. Advantage Robinson. See if he can snag back that, that stroke he lost on the last. No, he can't. Not with a shot like that. Oh, no, that went backwards even. A little rain falling. These guys seem to be picking up the pace a little bit on the tee pad. Huge tee shot for the tournament coming up. No doubt. Double G gets this one in the fairway safe. At least one stroke gained. 
Uh, it looks a little narrow. See if it unravels fast. Well, it's safe, so worst case scenario, par. Yeah. We have your course record holder in the clubhouse, Nate Sexton. He's with PDJ's Grant Zellner, sending it down to Portland. What to do, Nate? With Nate Sexton, as of this moment in the clubhouse, with a round equal to the hot rounds here at Glendevere, what clicked for you today that hasn't been clicking before? Um... I don't know. I think uh, I just hit the game plan a little bit better. Uh, got off to a good start. Um, I think this course sets up pretty well for me, and I was putting pretty well until right there at the end. I almost felt like I played pretty close to a perfect round there. Obviously, couldn't make a couple huge ones, but that last putt was really the only brutal mistake I made. We're playing a stretch of events I like to call the Oregon Trail here this week, next week, uh, down at the Beaver State Fling. Do you get an extra charge when you get to play a top-level tournament in front of a crowd that is more or less a hometown crowd? Yeah, I think so, a little bit. I mean, I, I certainly look into the the audience and I can see familiar faces. You know, people I used to compete against or people that have been uh, at all these tournaments for 20 years when I was coming up and growing up. So you get to say a lot more hellos, and uh, that's fun. And I can definitely tell that the cheers on T1 are a little louder for me than for most, and that that's kind of fun too. Speaking of familiar faces, what a trip was it for you to get to see Colin on DGN coverage? Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. I really wish he could have kept the fire going uh, yesterday, but unfortunately missed the cut. Uh, but he's a great player. I mean, he's a full-time, you know, engineer, so he doesn't play a lot of tournaments. This might be about his only PDGA tournament this year, but he came out here and proved that, you know, he can throw. Final question for you. You've been very selective in terms of your scheduling for a variety of good reasons. Can you give us any insight as to your playing schedule for the balance of the summer? Uh, I th it's, it's always in flux. Um, I'm considering withdrawing from Europe and hitting a couple more U.S. events because the travel and the European situation for a couple reasons is uh, a little dicey, I think. Uh, so we'll see. I, I don't know for sure, but I, I hope to play D Glow. That's a tournament I've never played before. I'm looking at perhaps trying to get into the Idlewild Open that I've never played before. And then I'd like to play Ledgestone, World Championships, Northeast, uh, GMC and uh, MVP, and USDGC. Hopefully Tour Championships as well. With an excellent round today, and at the moment, Nate Sexton into the top 10. We'll see how the dust settles at the end of the day here in Portland. Always nice to hear from our friend Nate Sexton. No doubt. Well done today out there on the track. Nearly walking off the track with a new course record all on his own. It's a little slip up at the end, but all in all, solid performance. Mm -hmm. So we saw some action. Robinson, that second shot got back in bounce. They're saying on the fairway after two throws, that looked like it had no chance of being safe, but somehow, some way, green flag for Isaac. Beth for three from way back. And that's drifting to the right, too. That's in danger. That's not coming back, Ian. No, it's not. Double OB for Paul McBeth here on 14. Is he throwing from the same spot? He is going to have to re rethrow. I don't think that ever touched uh -huh. green, safe grass. I don't think so. Yep, you can see him throw the mini down. Brutal. That is brutal. <laughs> and after Isaac tags the first tree possible, he's in better position than Macbeth. Macbeth is going to have to reach for another disc and make sure this stays on hyzer only the whole time. Adds yeah. a lot of hyzer to that one, which means he's going to lose on some distance. Just going to try to salvage this hole with the smallest number possible from there. And that's, again, kind of off the beaten path. Spotter running out there, there with There is flags. OB on that side, Philo. In the tree line, just shy of the tree line is OB. Hard to tell. I haven't seen any flag for sure. Oh, it looks like Robinson's second was out of bounds. Or maybe this is provisional? I think they're going to do this as a provisional just in case. That's going to land safe for Isaac. So either way, advantage for Isaac after Macbeth goes OB, OB. Right. 
take a look at this on the flyover. Got to make this initial right turn mandatory on the corner. Things open up pretty nicely, but then that OB string comes up on the right side. Really want this to fade out towards fairway middle. Don't want this thing to continue turning right like we saw the mistakes. And then obviously this extremely guarded green playing back up the grade. A couple of big mature Douglases here trying to block you up. Trying to come around the outside seems to be the preferred line if you can get the angle. Yeah, it's it's a big ass though on that second shot. Everybody seems to be coming up short. Yeah, and those uh, limbs are hanging down and kind of playing Matumbo out there, knocking down the shots on the entry. So... Yeah, a little bit of... Difficulties on this green for a lot of the, the field. Yeah. Here, making sure the green's clear so it doesn't throw on anybody again. Doesn't want a repeat of 11. Nice to have a caddy in these situations. Help keep your stuff dry and keep you dry. There's Jessica Weiss back there behind Weiss's Gary. pieces. <laughs> Mo likes to call her Jay Weezy. There you go. Yeah. She can have multiple nicknames. Yeah, definitely. Why not? Double G looking for this thing to... Nice shot there from Double G. It's not going to be putting for birdie, but par in hand for sure. Maybe a sonic throw-in approach potentially for Double G. Most likely, though, up and down for four. Puts the pressure on Simon Lazat now to get up and down for par. He did make it quite a ways up the fairway. I think he got a considerable amount further up the fairway than did Double G. Agreed. So let's see where he gets his mark. Yeah, G was 550 into the pin there. Simon, they're saying it's 461, by the way. That's a long carry, really but Simon's carry. definitely got the arm to get there. He's going to have to really challenge that right side OB. We've seen some shots. Kind of getting sucked out over there onto the right side and don't want to come back. Mm -hmm. This is, would be an, a heroic par save if he can pull it off. Just but coughing up one stroke would be okay for be Simon okay. in this situation. Yeah. But for sure, par would definitely be huge for Simon right now. A little bit of wind blowing in his face. That's definitely going to make things more difficult. It's got the PD too. Oh, it's something really overstable. Wouldn't be surprised if he tries to give this a little extra second, let that wind die down a little. Disc is away, appropriate angle. Let's see if it has the right distance. It's coming in shy. It is coming in shy. It's just gonna be in front of Double G. He's gonna have a long look. Probably in that 70 foot range again for Simon Lozat to save par. Disappointing there, I'm sure, for Simon, but things aren't off the rails just yet. Yeah. There's tour director Jeff Spring and course designer this weekend. The man is three for three in his course designs. He's killing Brewster it. Fox running this one. Killing it. Burr on 15. I know uh, some of that stuff over in Vermont was Steve Brinster inspired. Yeah, they they co-designed that one. Yep. yep. Don't want to forget. Or those, those two, yes, thank Don't you. Don't want to forget old Stevie. Brinster and the Twinsters. A legend in the game. Absolutely. U.S. champion. No doubt. Brinster was one of the more lethal guys on tour when I showed up. He was one, He was a heavy hitter, Goodness wasn't he? Goodness gracious, man. Like, so consistent. Once you get to the East Coast, man, and Brinster Oof. showed up, you were like, oh. Never mind. No, not winning this one. Yep. Robinson throwing four from the fairway. This has the right attitude on it. See if it gets a good skip. And it does. Digs in nicely. So a chance to save bogey for Robinson. There's a bogey putt coming up inside circle one. Oh, under the circumstances, that's a good bogey with Macbeth. <laughs> After four throws already. Yeah, he's got on the fairway. a ways to go still to get to the basket. Double bogey at best for Macbeth if he can get up and down. Let's get turned into a hockey stick real quick and send him back into a tie with Gannon Burr. Mm -hmm. Thankfully for them, the chase card has kind of slowed down. They still have a little bit of room. Although, 
and that one's going to be close. There we oh, go. Wow. Recovery shot done for Macbeth. That'll turn into a double bogey, albeit very untimely. Still got some holes to play. Can always recover. Well, I'm doing lengthy putts coming up for Simon and Garrett. Garrett at 92 feet, so most likely just a layup and a par, right? For double G? I yeah. Mean, he's got a line. He could take the Sonic out and take a stab at it. Doesn't need to be very aggressive. He knows he's going to gain a stroke unless if Simon Lazat throws in a miracle himself. Right. This definitely turns into that kind of mano a mano, you know, match play, chess feel here. Every play is going to have a lot of meaning to it the rest of the way out. Garrett tries to get cute and makes a mistake, then he just gave back that opportunity, you know? So Truth. Got to be smart here. Yeah, just hit the gap first. Wasting no time. Chips it around, lays it up. Smart play there from Double G. Absolutely. Take the stroke you were gifted. Simon will try and take back that gift, but it will be from 80 feet used to do so. A little bit of air blowing around. Got to thread the needle through a couple of trees. That's going to be off and left. Short. Simon yeah. Lozat's going to pick up the bogey. Once again, make things a little more interesting. Stroke on Lazat. They are making their way to the next, and this tournament coverage is sponsored by Fortnite, and a new season starts this week. Check out the link in the YouTube description. technology and providing data that helps you take the next step whether it's your next training session league night or major because we believe the best way to grow the sport is to push the sport and the best way to do that is together we're focused on the future to make that happen I'm Johannes. Hey, I'm Jonathan. And today we're going to talk about how to aim. You have some problems with the distance, the timing, and uh, pretty much everything. This is kind of the, the ground or the beginning of the throw. There you go. Then we're going to throw some forehands. Oh, yeah. Then you just stroke the board, and then you push it in the basket. You should never, ever throw your max on a golf course. What? Welcome back to the action at the Portland Open. Garrett Gerthy, T of 15. Difficult shot for the righty backhand. We're live on the tee. Please hold. Please hold. Everyone stop. We're live on the tee.
plays the skinny line. Double G trying to stay clean. Oh. Catches one. Big bounce to the left. It's such a skinny line on this it one for the backhand. Is. Green flag for double G. Spectators, Green flag. Green flag. Right. Left in the right, second level. Simon. OB starts to creep in on the left side of this basket, somewhere in between circles. That looks inside. Simon Lazat not going to regain that birdie stroke with that swing. No, nope, looks like he will carry at most one stroke to the next. Robinson, let's check out our third place battle now. It's actually a tie with Burr, Radolin, Robinson, and then Macbeth is one more back. Paul got a triple bogey on that last one. I eight. thought it was double. You just has an eight. That's a quadruple. It's a par four. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Snowman for Macbeth. He went one out of bounds, throwing three. That went out of bounds, and he was throwing five. That stayed safe, so that's seven, eight. They're right. Wow. Miscounted on my part. Macbeth. Not flipping enough. And there is OB out there, so it needs to hit the brakes, and that goes shooting straight into the OB. In between circles for Macbeth for par. Unable to catch a shin and keep him safe. <laughs> Would have been the first time that happened. Hammis. Firing on 16. Getting the flare skip and Looks circle like two. Yeah. Up, at, up ahead on the green, Gannon Burr putting for birdie. Circle two, look for Burr. That would have given him solo third. Heavy metal, unable to drop it in. Simon back down 15's fairway, throwing two, looking to salvage par. Oh, he's taking a soft stab at this. Simon Lazat, oh, wedges it in the bottom of the assembly. That's so I don't cool. know if he could have thrown it any higher, Ian, you know? Like, yeah. that's probably about as much air as he could have put on that. I mean, that's what he needed to get in. It was just another foot of air. That probably would have dunked it. Check out this replay. That's one way to stop the disc, Philo. That is, man. Throw it into the basket. Yeah, he took it about as high as he could and just... Oh, uh, it does run out of steam. <laughs> Portable basket grabs up in the assembly. And now Garrett to get up and down and match that par. Stay one back. Very fortunate for the thick grass there. Foliage on the ground, slowing him up. Double oh. G tries to toss the Sonic in, or maybe the Puddle Top AX3. Nice approach there from Double G to keep things interesting. Mm -hmm. Adam Hammes for birdie from circle two, hole 16. to give Adam a share a third. Adam Hammes, lethal from the circle. That's where you'll find him tied for third place after a great make. Robinson. Yeah. A birdie. Bounce back after the double on the previous hole. Isaac Robinson has been a grinder all weekend long. Holding on. So low third, I believe. Back to 26 under. Yep, with that make. Paul Macbeth now for par. They're calling this inside circle one. Got it pin high. Yeah. Able to knock that in. Dodge the tree in front of him on his right. Good save. Good save there for Macbeth, but man, that snowman just before, I thought that was just a double. I miscalculated, ended up being a quadruple bogey. There was a lot of strokes to count, to be fair to you. Man, that just <laughs> gobbled up all of those awesome holes that he strung up. Yeah, it really did. They are on their way to 16. A break until they get there.
The MVP Black Hole Pro is the best portable basket on the market. It's easy to transport. You can set it up in under 60 seconds, no problem. It's perfect for any sort of practice putting. I would recommend it for anyone who needs a portable basket. There's a better way to find out what's coming next from Dynamic Discs. Check the release calendar at dynamicdiscs.com and you can see all the discs releasing soon and the date they're releasing. So you don't have to keep your ear to the ground. grouping about to tackle the 16th let's take a look Philo yeah this one's been playing kind of stingy this week 410 feet got some guardian trees out there to avoid low ceiling baskets kind of tucked in there on the tree line definitely adds some complexity to this drive it's not playing as the easiest not playing as the toughest it's out there yep Robinson should have the box. Looks like they might be waiting for the next tee box to clear, Philo. Maybe the green? Yeah, they are waiting for this tee to clear, so I'll show you the action there. Freeman. That's a correction, man. Great shot, Joel. Yeah, big. Yeah, dude. Burr likes that one. Joel Freeman crushing it. He can move a disc. Yes, he can. He's got 500 all day. <clears throat> Robinson, T of 16. Isaac solo third by a stroke. Par three, a par four, and a par five on the way back to the clubhouse. A little bit of everything. Ooh, love that line. Nice line. Drives up a little bit short and left, but a putt. He's been solid on the putting green this week. Double G, big drive coming up for this man. Robinson, 94% C1X, 25% C2, solid. Big drive here for Double G. Every shot so important here these last three holes. Running out. All right, if that fades, that could be really nice, Ian. It's looking fantastic. Swings it out a little deep. It comes around the backside for Double G just inside circle one. Been making a living from that range all week long. He's going to need another big one here. Simon to match. Different line for Simon, yeah? Roller. The roller. Simon Lazat trying to go up the middle, stand up. He's missed the two trees you got to miss. Now it's all about the finish. It's running long again, Ian. 
It's taking forever to curl. It's going to be a little behind Garrett, it looks like. That's two of those today, yep. Yep. And back in that 60-foot range for Lazat. Hasn't been the sweet spot this weekend. Macbeth. Chance for Garrett to tie this thing up with two to play. Love this. Beth also playing the Heiser route. Nice flare skip. That'll be right around circle's edge or a step or two inside. Mm -hmm. Take a look at Simon's reaction to this roller. Love the eye focus looking to the spot where he wants the disc to leave his hand. Got it to stand up, but not to roll over fast enough. Maybe that long, wet grass, you know? Yeah, he knew it was a little bit too much. Didn't get the right finish as quickly as he needed to be deep in circle one, stress-free putt. See if Simon could get connected and knock in a long one and put the pressure on double G to make the shorter putt. We just got Bushnell range, 51 feet for Lazat. Robinson's at 46, Paul's at circle's edge. Garrett's about to get filled in. He's right on the edge of the circle. 33. Yep. Yep. Depending on how it looks to the line, he could not mark it and do a little step through putt if he wants or Oh, right, sure. If he marks it, then he can't follow through, so choices for double G and which style of putt potentially he'd like to take. It's really going to come down to what happens with Simon first, but till then. Oh, Macbeth updated to 20 feet. Albert Tom on 17. His second shot from the fairway. Looking for some oh, ground play. There it is. Funny. That should jump inside circle one for Albert. Albert would go on to birdie. He was yeah, underneath the bucket. That's going to be a turkey for uh, Albert Tom coming into the clubhouse. Got one more hole left to go. The highlighter man making highlights. Seven down through the back nine. Actually from hole seven to current, he's eight down with the eagle. Jeez. Had that opening hole bogey, so it's going to bring him one back to seven. Not only in circle two, but he's got to shape it. Simon for birdie. I like his chances when he's got to shape it a little bit. Seems to focus up just a little bit more on those. It was underturned. Yep, never gave it a chance. Didn't want to challenge the tree too much. So a chance for Garrett to knot this thing up again. Yep, he's going to get to wait for Isaac to take a putt. A little more time to collect his thoughts, compose himself. Just for Isaac to extend the lead for third place That's again, and he does. Man, from 46. Man's a gamer. Sure is. Up in that C2. And giving himself a little breathing room. He's now got two strokes on the field for that solo third. Girthy to knot it up with two to play. Uh, he's definitely inside circle one. Mm -hmm. Got to maintain balance. Doing such a good job all week long from this range. One more time for Double G to keep the heater on. Count it. Big celebration pump there out of Double G. Knows that he needs every last one of these opportunities to pay off. God, this man's putting is phenomenal this week. Probably the best I've seen his whole career. There's a little bit of hyperbole. He's kind of making Paul look like a bad putter this week. <laughs> you know, in comparison? In comparison. Yeah. It's just Double G's been in a different position for Macbeth all yeah. tournament. He's not playing from behind, not quite as deep as from behind as Macbeth. A little less stressful. Sure. Simon puts in par. Uh, plenty of pressure packed on these putts for Double G and chin up, chest up. Drill them in the middle. So many just edge of circle makes for Garrett. A lot. That's definitely a range you got to be comfortable from and not be nervous about Double G looking super strong on the putting green this weekend. Taking a look at his stat line on the week. He's 100% C1X today. That's awesome. Definitely got to have that when you're trying to chase down a win. C2 putting almost at 40% on the weekend. 
It's really good. Circle two in regulation, 74%. That's great. That means he's given himself a lot of opportunities. And exactly. All of these circle twos are barely on the edge, too. They're not deep in circle two. They're 35 footers, 30, you know, four, just barely outside circle one. Garrett Gerthy putting on a show on the putting surface this week. Ahead on 17, Radolin. Sacrifices the body for the roller. It looks like it's gotten into the Don't see it. neighborhood of the green. Not exactly sure where. Udis says on the fairway after two throws. But it right. looked closer than fairway. Actually. That's what I thought. Yeah, we'll see. We'll show you that putt once it happens. The poison. Calmness of Garrett Gerthy trying to track down this Elite Series win. It's within his reach. Come from behind, victory over the great Simon Lazat, who's been on a heater this month. Lots of top 10 finishes, took down the OTB last week, trying to go back-to-back -back Dismania wins mm -hmm. two years in a row on the same two courses. Something you don't see happen very often. No. And now it said Garrett was one back, but Udis hasn't quite updated for 16 yet. They are tied. 34 apiece. Two holes to play, got a challenging par four and a very good finishing hole par five. Lots of things could still happen. It ain't over yet. This is close enough. It's coming down to 18, no matter what. You know, the score's separation possible on that one. Good dollar long birdie bid. Not to be for Radolin. I didn't even see the disc enter the green. Yeah, I think it came in from the left-hand side of frame. Adam Hammes with a long birdie look. Pushing a little long is Adam. Should be able to make that comebacker. Robinson. T of 17. A lot of the field today finding the fairway here at 17, but after that, this hole is playing extremely stingy. We're talking 11% inside circle one, just over 30% in circle two. Only 18% of the field making birdie, so big opportunity here for Garrett Gerthy if he can grab himself a bonus birdie here on 17. At least get himself into position off the tee, 830 feet in total. Disc is away, drifting to the right. Missing everything, he's in business. He's in the fairway clean. Macbeth next to T. Paul currently tied for fourth with Radolin, Hamas, and Burr. Really challenging the left side of this, and that seems like it's going to drift out a little early, Ian. Oh, does a catch nice a tree read. and drops him in the center. I agree. Good tree. Keeps him in the middle. That was a favorable bounce. Yeah, it was only going to fade away from the bucket. Simon, big tee shot. And that looks like he tugged it a little inside. That's got to stay out of those bunkers. Looks safe. All right. Maybe it's just a bunch of trees right there. Yeah, there's really nothing there to worry about. Nah, okay. Just a double mando, but it looks to be quite a ways between the two mandos. A lot of green grass and open space. Up ahead on the green, Gannon Burr. Sounds like he nipped the bottom of the cage. Par for Gannon. Let's fly 17, sir. Yeah, let's take a look at this. You see where these guys are trying to navigate through this wall of trees. There is some airspace up high, trying to bend it out there, set themselves up for a second shot that comes under the canopy now. Good a lot luck of trees, these. man, to beat. And obviously these tree limbs are hanging down, taking away the airspace. Seems to be about a dozen big tree trunks you're going to have to dance around and try to use some ground play. Skip in there. Ahead on the green, Radolin putting for par. Yeah, cool. yeah. 
Snaps that in there for a par. Solid putt. Keeps him in that tie for fourth. Adam coming back for par as well. Solid putt there from Adam Hammes for par. Nothing wrong with pars here at 17. Yep. It's an easy hole to become victim of. Burr for the same and to maintain his share of fourth. Fun action in the chains, but settles nicely. And Freeman to save par as well. Total just two down on the round today. Not yeah, having the Sunday he, he needed it. on it. Got off to a solid start once again for Joel Freeman. Had it four down through eight. Couple of bogeys on the back nine after he's made the turn, and things have dried up for Joel Freeman. Simon, 550 into the pin. That needs some more air or a huge skip. Well, does some dancing to get into the tree line. I'm going to guess 90 feet, 80 feet. Enough for an easy par, right? Par Which is all he needed to do from there. True. Never know with Simon. He's prone to throw something in, you <laughs> yeah, know. You just never know. 550 with those lines. Yeah, that's a big ask. Got most of it done. Macbeth, let's see what gap he picks for his second. Have you seen one you like yet, Philo? <laughs> it seems the more fair line is to the right. That's what I keep seeing over there. It's just the, the ceiling drops down so low. you, you got to challenge it right out the gate and hope the disc just kind of drops for you naturally. You see Macbeth really going up at it. Now he's just hoping it kind of, there it goes, drops and swoops and get an overstable skip. There you go, Macbeth. Finds his way right on the edge of circle one. That's going to be a slightly obstructed putt, but better than most. He was 500 feet to the pin. Better than most, man. 470 <laughs> wow. foot into that low ceiling. I mean, talk about low line drive guys. He's on your list. Yeah, he threw that beautifully on the flex. It is Robinson by just 10 feet. 380 versus 370 for Garrett. This is definitely in scoring distance here for Isaac and Double G. Mm -hmm. Keeping it under 400 feet gives you a little bit more of an opportunity here to get some ground play and skip on the finish. He hooked over on that too much. Yeah. Not going to fight back fast enough, but scoots up into that 60 foot range or so for Isaac. Girthy, a good shot here. Earn him a one stroke advantage. 370 feet and a lot of trees between he and the basket. Double G, the disc is away. And that's going to catch one of them and go the wrong direction. It looks like you're right, Ian. It's going to come down to 18. Oh boy. This fort style finishing hole. We will have the similar heroics. Might have a playoff. Man, anything's possible. This is going to be awesome. Get to watch it all live on the Disc Golf Network. Nothing like Sports Live, man. You know, just those the anticipation yeah. of the moments. And music Live, Sports Live, they're kind of in the same ballpark. I think music's a bit more, un excuse me, obviously sports are a bit more unpredictable. Uh -huh. But, you know, I think it's a very similar vibe. Like, really? if you go to see a band like you really, really like, uh -huh. and there's 100,000 people at the concert uh -huh. with you, or yeah. 50,000, it's incredible. We're listening to a Oof. CD later. Oh, man, or it's CD that, that amount of energy. Old butt. Oof. Sends chills through my body just thinking about it. <laughs> it's very similar to being in the world of athletics when uh -huh. a lot of positive energy flowing, kind of like the James Conrad moment, you know? You miss being on the stage hitting those drums, Philo? Yeah, I do all the time. I uh, think about it quite often, but that's a former life. Yeah. Had to leave that one behind. You still got them somewhere, right? Yep, they're all buried. Right. I still right. got my drums. I watched you play at the Hardings one year for Masters Cup, man. Oh, man, that was a great, great, great night. Killing it. We had a lot of fun that time. Double G to get in and save par and maintain that share of the lead with one to play. Double G gives that a soft stab safely on the green just outside bullseye. 
Should be a pretty stress-free par putt. Simon, 100 in. Well, if there were ever a time to get cheeky. He tried to get he cheeky. He tried. He? A little meat left on those putts, but very makeable. Matching par putts from about the same distance for both. Yeah. They're, they're close, but they're going to be pressure packed. Yeah, every play on the way in in this situation is going to have a little extra on it. Feel it flowing through your body, knowing how important the moment is. Just got to keep breathing and stay calm best you can. See if Robinson can bang another 50 footer. This one from 54. This will extend his third place. Cushion. Lead by one more. Oh my. Isaac Robinson, man. Whoa. This is his first tournament going on tour full time. Feel better, watch out. No doubt. Might have to start getting used to seeing this man's name. We've seen him before throw some super solid golf. It's not mm -hmm. like he's a, a sloucher, not a, able to do it. He's got the game. Macbeth to get to 26. So be solo fourth. Oh, it's not yes. though. And Isaac's brother Ezra is a total crusher too. <laughs> Simon, big par putt coming up to maintain his share of the lead. Flushes that down the middle comfortably in rhythm. And now Garrett, his version of the same. Girthy, yeah. no problem on the par. And it has been match play out here with Girthy and Lazat as Paul drops in par. What a battle between two of the biggest arms in the world. Absolutely. This is the venue for them. These guys are showing off all of their skills and expertise in shot shaping and distance. Putting, especially between these two players, has been pretty phenomenal. I think Double G's definitely a little bit on the positive side on the putting thing overall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Simon Lazat, though, has definitely made a bunch of timely putts. Double G, man, taking advantage of the big arm on the par 5, 11th, just encroaching on the group in front of him. Yeah, Gerthy is actually out-putting Simon right now. Strokes gained is 5 for Garrett, for 3.5 for Simon. Yeah, the rollers, Simon Lazat's been doing some work with the rollers. A couple of them just a bit off the mark long, had the right intentions, but just running out a bit long, but... Every once in a while, Simon gets on that circle's edge and needs one to get down and in and makes it happen. Approach game solid from both players as well. Simon Lazad a few times out of position, having to scramble for par. Same thing with Double G, get out of position, have to do something to save a par and keep it scrappy. Lots of these circle's edge putts, though, going down the drain for Double G. Yeah, I just took a look. He's got two circle two makes and then three from right on the edge of circle as well. He may as well keep them all in that same category because they mean about the same. And 18. Playoffs. One and 18 on repeat for sudden death. We're just going back and forth, <laughs> side to side. <laughs> Those are We're right next to each other. So Score separating holes at that as well. A par four and a par five back to back. Definitely hole one. Lots of OB on the back side and off to the left. And obviously a lot of OB on 18 to deal with. Got water. Got the OB line on the left. Mandatories. Ahead on the fairway, Albert. His third shot on the par five. A birdie would be four straight. Albert. Smooth little swing of the sidearm there. That's going to bounce up right up onto the assembly and job well done there from Albert Tom. His sidearm is so impressive. I'm impressed with how he's been playing this season. That's another top 10 finish for the Estonian. You got the Silver Series win down in Florida too, right? Yep, he certainly did. The bazooka led off down in Florida. Got himself on the on the map with a dub. Been he, playing some strong golf all season. This guy won a Silver Series just a couple weeks back in Masters Cup. Gannon Burr. 
come from behind victory at that. All right. Safely on the fairway. After two throws, throwing three from there. Did he lay up off the tee? I'm not sure like what right. happened. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised with his sidearm abilities. Don't need to get greedy off the tee. Just yeah. pitch one around the corner, make yourself a birdie. Get on out of here. There is 18's tee, where our final grouping is waiting for the fairway to clear. Head on the green. Nice putt there from, looks like, Luke Sampson. Good finish from Luke. He gets in a tie for 25th in a birdie finish after a slowdown. Aaron Gossage, I believe, now lining up. Yes, sir. This is a par look for Aaron. Tied with Heimberg and Aderhold in 11th. That's a successful putt there. No, it, no, it did didn't, really? not. That looked in the heart. Either way, I was going to say he's had a successful West Coast campaign. Aaron yeah. Gossage put in some good work down at the OTB. Tom for birdie. Heimberg, a bogey finish for Calvin. Hey, you know, you got to be proud of Vinny's work to get back into that top 10 conversation after kind of falling apart earlier on in this event. Grinded his way back into respectability. Exciting moments coming up for our gallery no and our doubt. viewers at home. And for our leaders as well, co-leaders <laughs> and Simon Double G. Don't envy their nerves right now. Freeman, back to 18's fairway. Looks like he's gone to the Firebird. A little bit more overstable play. I could be wrong. Looked like he had Boss Firebird option yeah. in his hand. See how aggressive he gets. That'll tell the story. Not very. That yeah, looks like a Firebird play. Yeah. Big, big flare skip. Stays on the right side of the tree line, so shouldn't have any issues with any of the mandatories. Joel Freeman will be playing three from there. Try to finish out his round with a birdie. What would, that, would that mean anything for him? Uh, not right now. Yeah, things dried up pretty badly for Joel Freeman. Still in the top ten, but yeah, things really hit the wall for him. On the back nine, no birdies. A couple of bogeys on ten and fourteen. Yeah. Nate Perkins and Five-time Paige Pierce chopping it up. Good friends. <laughs> Texas buddies. What up, Nate? Deuce is my friend. Nate's so great. Good dude. Oh, Dustin Keegan. Zoe and Dyke. They're good buds. Rodolin back on the fairway of 18. Looks like he's at one of the drop zones, Ian. Is he? Off the fairway after two throws. Correctly called. Throwing three. He's going to try to challenge this OB line and get it all the way up to the level of the green. Ian, what do you think of this shot? It's incredible. <laughs> Inside circle one from the first drop zone. I think we're going to be watching Rodolin for a while, man. For about a decade coming up. <laughs> Getting close to time to hang it up, man, watching these young guys crush. <laughs> it's a lot easier paycheck in the booth. I'm not going to say anything <laughs> about that. <laughs> what a shot from Cole. Hope for a Masters Tour to pop up soon. <laughs> We're the Champions Tour, right? Right. Yeah, the Disc Golf Champions Tour. I thought that's for, like, the guys over 55. There's two <laughs> over 50, yeah. Uh, Something like that. Uh, it's over 50 for golf, yeah. I think it is. You're right. Mm -hmm. Back to Burr. 
approach in on 18 as Hamas looks. Did he say 326? Sounded like a 326. Yep, said it again. This is Adam's third. That's a chip shot for Adam Hamas. So skilled with the sidearm. Should have a good finish. No, catches the tree. Rejected, but safe. That was going to be a bullseye. No doubt. Missed. That had nowhere else to go but right under the basket. All right, back to the tee for some huge tee shots. Robinson. He's got a stretch. There's some water over there. And I saw a bounce on the finish, so that should be safe. He's okay? Okay. Girthy, your co-leader. A little bit of a slip on the rip there, but he's heading towards the high middle. Should be all right. Able to clear oh, the water. Some great ground action too, opening up the corner. Gonna have a great angle in. With Double G's abilities, he could fire it up there, go for Eagle from that line. Macbeth. Looking for a little stand up, gets a hair of it there, some drift, that helps a little bit. He'll be off to the left side of the pond as well. Safe territory. And Straight look up the OB line. Your other co-leader, Simon Lazat. Ooh, that's leaking way off to the left for Simon. Just wants it to get across and get down. There is OB out left. Okay. That'll be safe. Not a ton of room over there. Double G advantage way up in front of Simon Lazat Great off the tee. Great point. See what Simon thinks of it, how he hates it immediately. Yep. You guys both saw the same thing. Yeah, I was hoping for some good favor. He got it. Didn't like the feel or the look of that play. And if you guys are watching on YouTube today, consider subscribing to the Disc Golf Network. Get to watch exciting finishes like this all year long. Yeah, if you don't want to watch this live, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> This is great. It's 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 nice. You can go on social media, you know, you don't have to worry about spoilers. There's no spoilers in live sports. Got a little message here from JP Jonathan Poole. Yeah. He believes Gannon's win at Masters Cup, his first ever tournament there. Not too many people show up to Masters Cup oh and my just gosh. take it down. I yeah. mean that's definitely something to tap the tip the cap to Gannon Burr for. Getting that big win, and it's such an iconic course that's so hard to get a win on anywhere, and, anytime. And it's 17 in one week. Oof. Old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And showing up and just getting it done first time. Very impressive. That's a cool note from JP. That, that course typically takes a long time to, to get dial dialed. Oh, yeah. yeah. So fickle. To learn all the places you can't be. Robinson. He's testing that OB line. This needs to get down in a hurry. It seemed like it almost returned. And it does. <laughs> Beautiful shot there. Sets him up for the corridor. Finish off this hole. Holden Harris likes it. Take one more peek at our final hole here. The giraffe. Called by Stokely the <laughs> giraffe. Big belly, long neck, small head. <laughs> well, got a couple of mandos after you clear that water. Things start to narrow up real tight with that OB strand on the left side. You got the trees to kind of help keep you off the OB to the right. Things bottleneck up pretty tight up here by the green right around circle's edge all around. Joel Freeman to finish off his tournament. Long range birdie after bouncing off the tree I believe. Oh, that was Hammis that hit the tree, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, either way, Joel Freeman couldn't find the airspace for chains. 
in that bid, comically bad. Last conversation with himself for the <laughs> yep. weekend. He could let it go. Yep. A little stress relief there on the laugh. Macbeth second. Hang this out over the OB line. That's a good play there from the five time. Should be a chip shot up and down for birdie for Macbeth. And that gets him solo fourth. So something to play for. Big moment here for Simon Lazat. Let's check out distances, Philo. 544 to balance out 463 for Girthy. So almost 80 foot advantage. Yeah. And they are waiting on Radalin, so we'll watch that action while they do. It's a birdie look for Radalin after the OB drive. Mm, there's some air pushing around up there by the green. Noted. That's a couple of putts we've seen. Never got up to the chain chain high. Just kind of fell out of the sky. What do you do if you're Simon Lazada in this situation, man? You back some 80, 90 feet from double G's drive, equal distance abilities for the most part, shot shaping skills, you know, does Simon Lazat push on it, try to push up the fairway, try to get eagle, does he play for birdie and oh, okay, well, put he, the pressure on double G to do something miraculous, to walk off with the eagle? I think he plays for birdie, right? That's got to be the at, smart at play. At 544, eagle is just, the risk reward is not there. Or Dolan, uh, bogey finish for Cole, but he'll have a lot of great finishes in his future. If his talent level has anything to say about it. I agree with you. We're going to be seeing a lot more of this young man in the near future, coming years. Great potential, high ceiling for Cole. Adam, wrapping it up. I think that's his best showing of the year. Uh, tie for fourth currently. That's a great turnaround for Adam Hammes. Been on the struggle bus for a couple of months this year. Down in the 80s and 70s. Yeah, and stuff. he started off with a couple of good tournaments, and then things just kind of went south for him. Just hasn't been able to find the rhythm. Joel Freeman gets it in there for par, and that's going to end his week. Three solid rounds, unfortunately, today. Things came up a bit short, and Oregon local Cole getting some love from the audience. Solo eighth for Cole. Burr. That was a birdie for Burr. I should actually give him solo, or solo fourth. Got him to 26 under for the weekend. Oh, no, 25, excuse me. Oh, did it? Oh, no, there he is. There he is, yeah, fourth, right. fourth alone. I lost him. Macbeth would need birdie to match. You see a disc yet? I don't. I'm assuming PD2. No, nope. uh, it's got something else. That looks like a cloud breaker, man. He's going for it. Simon Lazat trying to put the pressure on double G. He's got to swing this back on safe land. Out of bounds for Simon Lazat, and more than likely, that's going to be game over. He tried to put the pressure on double G. Hey, man. Could have taken it to a playoff with just a birdie, more than likely. I don't yeah. think double G was going to try to push, push on it. Eagle. No, just bite off 550, two 300 foot shots, you know. Uh, Simon Lazat seems to have just thrown away his chance to go a back Simon to back. Line at the worst time possible. Not sure why he chose to do that. Maybe we'll find out in a post. Event interview, maybe not. Looks like Double G is all set up here to take this one down. Double G going to the sidearm layup play. One angle, one turn, flip of the wrist for Double G, uh -oh. and that's not uh -oh. going to... I hear bad noises. That's out of bounds. No... Oh, way goodness. They both got away with one. But Simon now has the advantage. Super close. He's easy He's up a lot and down. closer, but more than likely probably both going to get five. Up and down. Yeah, yeah. Right? More than likely. So we're probably going to go oh about that. Oh, my gosh, man. man. Oh, wow. Is... You just thought, man, one big brain fart to the next. Huh? Like, why did, <laughs> why did Simon play this shot? And you're like, what is he doing? He's going for the home run play. And look, that comes up well short. He's out in the circle two, circle nah, it was never beyond all there. circles. You know, it's... Double G, not the best sidearm player, right? That's really not his forte. He's I gonna thought he'd rip a rock, you know? Just pitch it up there, yeah. putter or something. Maybe just go AVR. Wow. I mean, he probably part. thought there's no chance that sidearm doesn't come back, you know, way over stable disc, just barely hanging out over the line. But oh my, this crazy turn of events, crazy. huh? Crazy. I thought for sure Double G would just chip, chip, game over. Mm -hmm. That's what he was trying to do, to be fair. 
I'm sure it was, but man, that sidearm got away from him in a big way. Yeah, how about throw a backhand and just keep it in bounds the whole time? Throw, yeah, that's that's what I would suggest if I were his caddy, if I were walking with him. Mm -hmm. It's not your strong suit. It's going to put a little extra pressure on the body and the mind. Oh, wow. Big mistake there from Double G, unfortunately. Don't like to see that. Let's see if we got ranges yet. Girthy, no, still don't have his update yet. Simon's at 138, so guaranteed up and down five for Simon practically. Garrett Girthy went out relatively quick on his flight, so he's going to be quite a ways back. Mm -hmm. Is his up and down that guaranteed, maybe? Robinson with a beaut. That's a nice looking shot. Drives up a bit short on the distance, but right around circle's edge, uphill putt to finish off his round. That was from 380 for Isaac. Yeah, it looks like he took a nice stable mid-range, didn't try to force the issue, just played a nice clean shot. All right, let's see if we can grab range for Gertie. They're marking at 323, yeah, Philo. Yeah, he's a ways back, man. He went out early in flight. Just trying to throw a little dumpy sidearm out there, and it seems there's some air out there just holding some discs up, man, and... Double G falls victim following Simon Lazat out of bounds at the worst possible time. Now Double G is going to really need to sneak this one up there close, make sure that he can salvage par. There's the rock, Philo. That's the right play for the situation. He's going to need to execute now. Can't let his nerves and what just happened affect him anymore. It's in the past. Focus up on shot at hand. Quick set and release for Double G. This needs to drift a little bit. If this catches a tree, this is bad news. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Just does miss the tree, but that's well short. It's going to be a long putt for Double G for par. So, wow, advantage back on Simon Lazat's side. This is crazy. How quick can it turn? One throw at a time. Just yeah, not just, enough spin. It didn't look like he put enough pop on it. Didn't get the disc to drag over back on center with the mm -hmm. basket. And actually looks kind of fortunate that didn't hook up even more and yeah. find OB again. Let's see what G thinks of it. Trying to get the right pace and feel it up there. But yeah. uh, a little bit more meat on the yeah. bone than he'd like for a par putt. I don't have the range yet. Let's see if we get it here soon. Macbeth 236. They're calling double G circle two. Are they? I'm gonna guess 50 feet at minimum. It looked like that, didn't it? That was my eyeball's estimation. Macbeth doesn't like any of that. It's gonna be long. That's a little uh, sign. Disc and a half from being out of bounds inside circle one. Get a little Step in off the line, meter relief, make things a little bit closer for Macbeth to finish up. Yep, give him a share of fourth with Gannon Burr. Simon Lazat can technically put this in for Birdie and ice this tournament. Water says Matt Whisker. There's about 10 people in the gallery. You okay? Doesn't even have to make it technically to take it down, but should he feel like getting a little froggy? <laughs> I hope he does. Walking off with the throw in. Ops just to pitch it up, throws it to the base. Drop More than likely, power. unless if Double G can make a heroic putt. I mean, the man's been great from circle two all week long. Could it be the clutchest of all clutch putts for Double G to take it to overtime? 39% on the weekend from C2. Can he push it over 40? He's going to need to if he wants to push a playoff. Oh, and this is not uh -oh. looking great for Double G. He's got some limbs in the way between he and the basket. Got a little bit of tree to deal with. He likes to put it up high. This is an elevated basket. This might have to be a nose-up floater. Spinner, yeah, yeah. He's going to have to do a little spin putt at this kind of Simon style. To send it to overtime, double G. And pushes it just long. Second place for Garrett Griffey. What a whole 18 final. That was just back and forth. In the span of five minutes. I'm shaking my head. Just, I can't believe it, man, honestly. 
I know Double G is going to be a bit bummed on that one. That's 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 what we call cheese on bread right there. Yeah. That's cheese on bread. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's cheese on bread that he's not going to win, but he's played a great week of golf. Should be very proud of himself, but Absolutely. that uh, OB shot from the fairway, that's the cheese on bread, man. That's the thing you can't have happen when Simon Lazat opened the door for you. Just said, here you go, take this W. And he follows him and chucks it away. Macbeth to tie Burr in fourth while your winner watches. Oh, another inside circle one miss for Macbeth, and that's going to give Gannon Burr solo fourth. How about that? Car. Garrett Gerthy, bogey in second place. Gotta be proud. Come on, crowd. Give him a little more love than that. Double G putting on one heck of a performance. This really was his tournament about three minutes ago. <laughs> Solo third for Robinson in your 2022 Portland Open champion, Simon Lazat. Back to... On behalf of Glen Devere, Stumptown Disc Golf, the Disc Golf Pro Tour, I'm pleased to present your 2022 Portland Open presented by Dynamic Disc Champion, Simon Lazat! Simon, you're one back-to-back -back tournaments, man. What's going on? I have no idea. I'm out of breath. I was, I was so nervous the whole round. Garrett played amazing, made every freaking putt you could make. That was crazy. And uh, I don't know with my game right now, it just it's all just working. The bad shots are getting lucky and the good shots are getting good results. Putter, putter's feeling good. I'm so, my heart's like going 180 right now. I can't even think. Talk about this incredible gallery that came out in Portland. Talk about the support that you feel from them. This gallery is European style. This is absolutely unbelievable. This is by far this might be the biggest gallery I've ever played in front of, the love. Um, Portland, I love you! Yeah. <laughs> I got one last question for you to let everybody in on this before I let you go. Your final approach shot that ended up going out of bounds on 18, bring us into your mindset going into that shot. Well, Garrett was in perfect position off the tee, so... The go for it shot is the only shot I ever practiced on this hole because I figured it was going to come down to the line and I felt like I had to go for it. I was feeling pretty confident the wind was helping a lot. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Well, congratulations and go celebrate, Simon. How can you not love that guy? You know? 
you should be a fan if you're not of yeah. Simon Lazat. Such a good guy, the talent, well deserving. The person, the showman, man. all of it, man. Well-rounded individual, yeah. just class act all around. Got to love watching Simon Lazat compete. Wow. Welcome back to the booth in Milwaukee. I am Ian Anderson. That's Philo Brathwaite. Biggest takeaway on the day, man. Well, you got to be thrilled and stoked for what Simon Lazat's done in the last couple of weeks. Obviously, back-to-back -back wins. That's two tournaments in two years that Discmania teammates have taken it down. Crush boys. Crush boys doing work in NorCal and Oregon. Good <laughs> stuff. But, I mean, you got to look at what's happening in the field behind Simon as well. I mean, yeah, it's great for Simon. He's doing good things. But look at this young talent, man, coming up the leaderboard. Things are shaking up. Out playing guys like Macbeth and... You know, James Conrad's and the whole list of them, you know, there's only a couple of these 1050 dudes like in the mix, those names that we're expecting to be up on top of the board and these young players really bringing it to them. Yeah, it's been an incredible watch, man. Congrats to Simon. We're going to take a quick break before the OTB after show. We'll have the OTB shot of the day. We'll have some interviews. We'll catch you guys there. So the slammer, it doesn't fly as far as the harp, but that's exactly what I designed it for. It was designed for me to be able to throw hard with real severe angles, a lot of flex shots, and it's a unique spot in the bag. So that's why I think it's becoming so popular. Hey, it's Zach from Power Grip USA. We've heard from so many disc golfers just like you that you can't wait to see what Europe's number one disc golf shop can do here in the United States. Well, the wait is nearly over. Launch is nearly here, which means this is your final weekend to sign up for 20% off your first order at PowerGripUSA.com. We'll send you all the details by email when we open, including that promo code. We can't wait to show you what it means to be a pretty good disc golf shop. We'll see you soon. I like to get my weight back, keep it back. I'm almost always finishing on my tippy toes. Think about it as arm gives you the line, fingers and wrists give you the spin. My one goal is to stare at that chain link and let my muscle memory take over from there.
this huge shot on three for Simon, your Portland Open winner. Well, you certainly got it done in a variety of ways this weekend. Really clean off the tee, really nice work from the fairways into the greens, giving himself a lot of opportunities to score. Got a couple of nice breaks here and there. We saw some of them over at Blue Lakes and B button reverse spins <laughs> yep. and a couple of favorable tree kicks and a couple of baskets. Putts weren't looking so perfect and found a way in and a little wow. bit of everything for Simon Lazar yeah, this weekend. Roller game was bag. working. Yeah, just a Even mixed bag of skills and tricks and Busted out the forehand from time to time, and it was great. A couple of hero shots here and there. He didn't really come after him all the time, but the one over on hole two was definitely the route less traveled this weekend. Only saw three shots go out that window. He and Macbeth, you know, two for Simon, one for Macbeth. And yeah. Simon, the only man to convert. I just like the poise and the, the confidence he's playing with. He's believing in himself. Verbally said so in interview play was looking real sharp it really wasn't until the last five holes where things kind of got sloppy for Simon Lazat had a bogey free round effort going into hole 14 early mistake unable to save par ah oh, look at G bringing it in with a bunch of pars to the end is Simon Lazat thanks to the last hole bogey from Garrett Gerthy's gonna take it down getting a hug from his buddy Casey White and doing the lap a one stroke victory Philo, I'm going to be honest with you. I do not get cheese on bread. Explain that to me. Okay. <laughs> so we took Garrett Gerthy and uh, David Felberg down to Barbados 10 years ago. Okay. We'll get back to it in a second. I think we got Simon Lazard right, all right, right, all right. Well, Let's take it over to <laughs> Grand Zellner. We'll get cheese on bread after the interview. Here's Simon. Straight off the course, we're with Simon Lazat. Thank you for sitting down with us yet again, Simon, after all the times you have this week. Let's start with hole number 18, because there's no better place to start. You look like you were thinking eagle all the way from the tee. The hole had only given up five birdies total on the day, and yet you were thinking eagle. Take us through the roller coaster of each shot down that hole. Yeah, um, when Garrett tied it up, with another circle's edge putt on 16, I was like, okay, here we go. Just like I thought, I was going to come down to the wire last two holes where I went bogey, bogey yesterday. So that obviously was still in the back of my mind. And I felt like I already knew yesterday that those two strokes or three strokes I gave away on the last two holes were going to be interesting at the end of this tournament. And it happened just like that. And then the rain came down on the last couple of couple shots my hands started getting cold because I was so nervous like my blood circulation wasn't working properly and my heart was just pumping like way too much I already have high blood pressure and that went through the roof so yeah I thought Garrett perfect tee shot so <laughs> all I really could do was put him under pressure with a great shot like maybe circles edge maybe circle two somewhere to make him think, because you always want to make your opponent think, and that was my goal there, but going OB was obviously the worst thing I could have done. At least I went OB way down there, and Garrett just ended up, um, I don't know why he chose sidearm on that second shot. I think he doesn't really know, know either, and he's going to have some bad dreams about that shot for a long time, because he had it in the bag, and he deserved it, but that's, some, some, that's how golf goes sometimes. It's never over till it's over. You've been really candid with us all week about the mental aspects of playing this game, about the mental fatigue that you've been enduring for the last couple of weeks. Uh, how was that today, being able to look your opponent directly in the eye and play them shot for shot? How was that mentally on you during the course of the entire round, not just on 18? Yeah, I mean, Garrett is one of the nicest guys on tour. I get along with him great. We're like fellow distance throwers, so we've been together in, the, in Vegas in the desert throwing for distance. and. Uh, he's such a good sportsman, so he's one of my favorite guys to compete against. I think our last battle head-to-head -head was Masters Cup uh, a couple of years ago where, where he ended up winning. So I, th I thought this is my revenge time. Maybe I can get one back. Uh, but I, I felt like he outplayed me, but I got away with it. You told us this is, if not the longest, one of your longest stretches away from home for the entire season. Did you have any inkling going into this road trip that you would be sitting here where you are right now, two victories in? Did you have any inkling in the way your game was going leading up to it? Absolutely no clue. And I wish, because I've got this question the last two weeks like 50 times probably, like 
what's what feels different, what's about your game right now, what has changed, and I I don't know. It just it just feels like the disc golf gods are on my side. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all I can say. And the putt training helped a lot, of course. The confidence around the basket is really everything in disc golf. Every, everyone knows that. And keep it low and straight. That's the new motto. <laughs> we got to ask you, what are your next plans? I'm flying home tonight. My flight's at midnight, so I'll be in, back in, in Boston tomorrow morning around 10 or 11 and spend about 10 days with the family. Then we're flying together to the match play, which uh, I'm really looking forward to. It's going to be my son's first airplane ride and first disc golf tournament experience, so that's going to be really fun. And then back home for a couple of days and preserve, and the tour goes on. So I want to say really, after OTB win, I texted my boss, because he was obviously super happy and proud. I texted him, now I have to back it up, because I knew a win is great. But it's like we always say in putting and the vlogs and stuff, twice or it's luck. So now I did it twice, not luck. Well, you certainly deserve the break that you have coming to you. Thanks for playing and showing us an incredible game today, Simon. Thanks, everyone. Disc Golf Pro Tour, Disc Golf Strong, PDGA, Disc Mania, of course, Grip Equipment, everyone who supports me. The love out there was unbelievable. I can't wait to be back. Peace. <laughs> Congrats. That was a great <clears throat> interview. I love the honesty there from yeah. Simon Lazat. You know, I mean, when you're up on this high of a level, it's, you know, you can get a win here and there. We're going back to back, man. That's something we just don't see very often week after week. You know, it's mm -hmm. just the, the winds are starting to spread out throughout the field. All right, cheese and bread me. All right, yeah, cheese on bread, man. That's a big on thing, man. <laughs> so cheese on bread is kind of like the worst possible thing. Like you could have left to eat in your refrigerator, like oh. there's nothing else good to eat. So you got cheese on bread, and you're like, well, I guess this is what it is. You know what I uh -huh. mean? So that's kind of what cheese on bread is. We picked that up in Barbados okay. some decade or more ago. And then we took, took it down there to introduce disc golf to the island, and we've been saying it to each other ever since. I remember that trip. Was it? That was a lot of fun, man. Unfortunately, things didn't pan out quite as awesome as we really? were, but, you know, yeah, yeah. You we're still working on it. There's still baskets down there. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Garrett Gerthy in the clubhouse with Grant, sending it down to Mr. Zellner and Gerthy. So gracious of Garrett Gerthy to now join us here in our post-round interview setup. We just heard from Simon about the emotions of that final hole alone. Can you take us through what you were thinking shot by shot as you stood on the tee thinking eagle or bust? Well, we'll I'll take it back to the tee pad where I knew if I threw a great drive, I could apply some pressure on him on his first drive off of 18, uh, being it is a pretty tough landing zone and knowing that I put it in a really good spot. Uh, I was trying to be a little bit more aggressive. I seen the Mando sign on the tree straight ahead. I said, just just throw for the Mando tree. I threw a Halo Destroyer that was uh, stable enough to hook up and put me in a good spot. And uh, I chose to throw a sidearm on my upshot due to the little bit of wind in the rain. I didn't want it to slip out. I knew if I threw it, it was probably going to go right. But uh, I just pinched it a little bit too hard and held on to it and it went a little bit wide and kind of opened the door after uh, Simon just threw his disc out of bounds. But I knew he was way up there, so I knew I had a chance, but uh, my shot where I threw out of bounds, I had to throw my rock three. I felt like if I threw T-Bird, it was going to go too far, so I came up short. Simon was able to chip up and... Uh, you know, you got to take them on the chin sometimes. We, we live, we learn, but giving ourselves that opportunity and me not being in the spotlight in a while, this really helped the confidence. So um, it was tough, but it's uh, always great learning and battling against Simon. So Social media has been on fire over the last few days and today during the course of the round about your putting in particular. Your putting style is a little bit unusual. Yep. Do you feel like when you have days like this, it, it validates the way that you choose to go about things? For sure. I mean, I feel like in basketball, you know, there's so many unique ways to shoot a free throw. It's kind of the same way. If you practice something well enough and enough, you'll you'll get some good results as long as you know what you're doing, you know. Um, I've been putting in good work with my disc dot. And, uh, you know, before I was just putting one or two dots on. Now I'm putting three or four to give me a nice little zone to hit. So I feel like that's been improving and making those putts outside the circle has helped too. Um, 
Uh, I feel like the first half of the year I was kind of scared just to go for circle two putts for some reason. And I told myself, told myself, face the fear, just give yourself an opportunity. And this weekend I did that. So I was still proud. You said it's been a while since you've been inside the spotlight. Now you've been under some serious heat lamps for several days in a row. What will you take from this experience in Portland that will give you a charge as we move into the heavy part of the summer? Um, well, next is Milo. It's my favorite place on earth to play. So uh, while Simon's taking a break with the kids, hopefully uh, I can get my one in a row going on. So uh, as long as the putt's working again, I feel like I can give myself an opportunity at Milo. Uh, I love that place. Gary Gerthy, a well-earned podium finish. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. I want to thank Innova Champion Dis. Thank you. Just a fantastic interview from Garrett, man. Just super candid, getting us in his brain coming down 18. That was incredible. Again, very honest. Double G, yeah. keeping it real, you know, just telling it like it is. I love that about the man. He's been around a long time and really come into his own these last few seasons, really learning what his game is and how to compete at the highest level, keep up with the top dogs. He's always had the arm. Always. You know, he's really learned how to golf in the last few seasons and that putting game coming around so strong this week, man, that's got to be feeling good, pushing that confidence up and up and up because, man, as Simon said, you got to be able to putt. Everybody says it. you got to be able to putt to survive on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. And once, you know, Double G's got that confidence brewing, he's just as dangerous as anybody. It's great to see him have a great week out here. He outputted one of the best putters in the game this week. No doubt. He outputted almost the whole field, it seems. I mean, it seemed Joel Freeman was doing the best on the circle, too, overall, maybe on the weekend. But, man, Double G, really, the clutch putting, man. It's not just that he made the quality of putts that he had to make time and time again. Back up against the wall, trying to hunt down Simon. Every one of those putts were clutch and crucial, and he capitalized, especially circle one, and that was a range he struggled with. He was talking about being afraid to even take circle two putts Right. to now just, like, knocking them down, full confidence, running chains. Awesome to see. From circle's edge, like a ton Lethal of this time, weekend. Man. Yeah. All right. It is time for the OTV shot of the day, Philo. Do you know what it is? I have no clue. Yeah, same here. Let's see what they got. Yeah. They're going to surprise us. Want that Simon Roller. Ah, uh, good pick. 370 foot shot here for Simon down and back up the hill. Just perfectly bled over. Right when he needed one, too. He definitely did. Simon was starting to lose some ground to Double G. Double G was off the mark on this one, and that gave him a little bit of a bounce back birdie feel and a little bit of momentum. This game's so momentum driven. We saw how fast it can flip in one hole, hole 18. It was back and forth the whole time. And it's so awesome when these types of shots really come together for a player. So technical, so touchy. Simon Lazat, one of the best in the history of the game for touch and angle control. From any range. From any range. Yeah, seriously, mean, to a putter, it doesn't matter what the disc it is. It doesn't matter. He's so good with pretty much all the shots. He needed that one today. Things were starting to slip away at that point. Simon Lazat picking up the bonus birdie off the roller. Guys were struggling to get in close with that airspace. Simon is officially back. Wow, just one event away from being in the top five every week in the last month, six weeks or so. Some really nice shooting there. Wow, nobody's doing better than that right now. No, they are not. Simon Lazat on an official heater. Philo, it is time to call it a day, call it an event. The Portland Open was Awesome, man. Good times. Great job by the staff and crew over at Glen Devere. What an awesome facility. We thank them so much for inviting us back. Can't wait to see it again next year. Yeah, huge thanks to Jeff Spring, Dustin Keegan on the design, Zoe Andyke, and Brian Earhart, our people on the ground, everybody, all the camera ops, everybody in the booth. Thank you guys so much. And for Philo's myself, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next one.